doing a video feed. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Hello, ladies and gen gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining in on the debut performance of the pilot episode of Jomez Cast. I am your host, Jeremy Colling, and I am joined by Mr. Jomez himself, Jonathan Gomez. And we have a different format for our YouTube audience. Yeah, thank you all for being here to the premiere episode of Jomez Cast. This is actually something that uh, we've been working on for a little bit, and we just wanted to try it out with our audience. So thank you for joining us. This is the the round one of the United States Women's Disc Golf Championship, mm -hmm. the first major of the year. And we are, uh, this is a type of companion stream. This is something that we're going to be showing you uh, all of the live action that you might see on the Disc Golf Network, but um, with kind of like a Joe Mess spin on it. Yeah, I mean, you came down here for this. Uh, I know there was a long drive all the way east from San Angelo, <laughs> Texas, but Mr. Texas guy himself here in a big Texas major, like you said, the first major of the year. We are here in Austin, Texas. The event is taking place at Sprinkle Valley, which is uh, the property that was put together by the people who run Austin Beer Works. It's their new location. And uh, I had the opportunity of playing this course the other day. And these women have an incredible challenge in front of them. It's a very technical course. Uh, the conditions today are mildly calm as far as the wind, but uh, it's a little chilly outside and they might see some sprinkle on the course a bit. But for the most part, I think they're going to have to get their technical game on as they try to attack this very uh, tightly wooded track. There's a few open holes towards the end of the course, but for the most part, it's going to have to require very uh, tight lines. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, an awesome week here. We're going to do two rounds of the live coverage uh, today and the final championship Sunday. And like you said, this is going to be more of a re uh, laid back, relaxed environment. Think of this as more of us just kind of watching the coverage together. And you guys have the opportunity to send in comments. We'll address some questions in the chat. Um, but it's going to be a little bit more interactive than what Jomas typically is as it is live. And we'll do our best to make this as entertaining as possible for people who are looking for a slightly different pace of um, watching disc golf. Yeah. So without further ado, let's get to the action. We should have our final tea time teeing off here any second now <laughs> thought my phone was turned off <laughs> it's live folks it is live <laughs> <laughs> so the card we are currently watching here they are on hole two so this is our chase card or our second card i guess there's not really a chase card first round yeah but our second feature group and we have I just saw her name before I, I'm not familiar with the player but last name Fountain I want to say Christy yeah Christy Fountain lefty I thought it was Emily Beach at first because there's not too many lefties on tour Holland Hanley currently in first place she had one bogey I think earlier in the round but for the most part she has had a very clean Welcome opening round to the 2024 United States Women's Disc Golf Championships this is our feature card. First of the box, from Potternew, Estonia. Representing Latitude 64, please welcome Kristen Tatar. She's had a pretty good year. <laughs> she is obviously one of the favorites, although seeing as this is a technical course, you got to imagine own especially coming off of the hottest tournament ever played by an fpo player in history it is certainly going to be drawing some attention going into this event hole one you want to keep the disc slightly on the left side it is a dog leg slightly to the right i believe and you have to get to about 315 feet, I think, is the perfect landing zone down the hill. If you have a good forehand flex shot, it's a great shot here, but you might see a lot of players just try to throw a safe mid-range or some sort to get down and left. Yeah, one thing to note, it was 
there was some moisture this morning, mm -hmm. like early this morning. It has cleared up, but that's not to say that everything is necessarily dry by now. From Charlotte, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. representing Innova Champion Desk, please welcome Kaylee. Kaylee. Kaylee King, a former champion at this event, which started as the national championship for women back in 1999, where Juliana Corbett won by 35 strokes, <laughs> just dominating the field of eight players, only winning $225. Oh, wow. so really From good. Rosebud, Arkansas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cat's hoping that she can uh, create some merch madness of herself uh, for herself at the <laughs> NCAA tournament starting today. Obviously, a lot of players watching that action. I didn't miss Ooh. it though. Ooh, and that's what Did really matters. Yeah, Fernando <laughs> through the gap, and it went just nervy. inside the right, or yeah, just through the right side. A little hop, skip, and jump to kind of maybe shake the nerves off because that is not a typical cat release. Ooh, Rebecca Cox from deep. Huge putt. Rebecca has put so much work into her putt over the years. It's cool to see her make a long one here at the major championship. Wow. Jonathan, we're doing a live broadcast on Joma's Pro. <laughs> This this is pretty cool. This has kind of been one of the visions from for Jomas for a while, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, this is certainly something that's very new for us. Not as much for you. You have done live live commentary before, but Just you once. know, our audience is is not as familiar with us doing things live. But it's something that um, over the years we we constantly are trying to find new ways to evolve. We're no, not one to shy away from a challenge, things like that. So this is why we're really excited to try something like this and, of course, be interacting with the fans. Like We're, we're keeping an eye on the chat and everything, and we'll be pulling some, some questions from there as we go along. So I'm very excited for this. I hope you're all enjoying it, and we'll, uh, you know, let us know what you think. Yeah, I'm excited to see the feedback as well. I mean, this is something that, you know, a little bit nervous about it, of course, because it's live and, you know. Jonas, for the most part, is pretty much once we hit record in the booth, we're going all the way till we're finished. But sometimes yeah. there's a slip up and we got to start over. But uh, obviously, you don't get that opportunity here with live. But um, yeah, like we said, we're going to be receptive to feedback on all this. And I hope that, you know, this style of, of uh, watching disc golf works for you because it's, you know, this is what we do when we're not behind the mic. Like we're sitting around watching disc yeah. golf and we're just talking about it. And that's kind of what we're going for here. And, Sports fans, we kind of got the inspiration from the Manning cast. Yeah. Is that a six for Owen on the first hole? I did not see that she had a double bogey. And we did promise some guests today, Jonathan. And if you want to introduce that guest, we can go ahead and get you in the... Uh, in the booth where you're going to be asking us questions later on. Okay. Well, I want to perform a little magic trick here. So now you see me. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to just do oh. a quick little spell here to see who appears. Come on. You always got tricks up your sleeve. Wow. Really good shot from Cat there to get out of trouble all the way up into C2. And then the magic trick... <clears throat> look at that. You look a lot like Brian Earhart, sir. Yeah. Welcome I, to the booth. That's because I am. Hello. Well, you just came from the course. What's going on out there? I think this course is awesome. Mm -hmm. I feel like everybody in disc golf dreams of having a place like this with a restaurant, a brewery, an awesome disc golf course, a mini course, ample spots for parking. It's not often that you come across a place like this. I see like a baby Maple Hill in the making. Mm. Okay. Oh, wow. That big putt that we just saw from Rebecca Cox actually puts her in first place. I guess Holland must have taken a double bogey on her last hole. And beautiful shot there on 17, 280. Wind was blowing headwind throughout the week. So throwing hyzers, pretty solid shot out there. I love this track. Mm -hmm. I think this course is so cool. Eight to 9,000 feet, 
par 64. That's kind of my dream disc golf course to play. Totally. Yeah, somebody asked me yesterday, like, what's the what's the best par number for a tour course? And I think somewhere in, I mean, it really is subjective, of course. I love a good par 54, but it's not necessarily what we're looking for on I tour. I do, too. But it is nice to have, like, that par 60 to 65, somewhere in that range. Oh, park job for Missy. That's going to be two under through three for Missy. Good start. Let's take a look at this again. I... Through watching this course get played, yeah. you think that someone who can only throw clockwise like Missy, she has a forehand, but not really mm -hmm. that powerful. You think that they're at a disadvantage, but I think most of the time she's going to be okay. <coughs> yeah, there are there are quite a few left to right breaking shots, but I mean, it's placement golf. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily like if you don't have a forehand, you are losing strokes. You just have to place your disc in the right spot mm -hmm. and then make another good shot. And that's, you know, the forehand might get a little bit farther around the corner. But I think that the, the age of disc golf we're in now, you have to have a well-balanced game if you mm -hmm. want to be competitive on any level. Yeah, like if you want to have an answer to every shot, I mean, you're just going to have to work really hard if you don't have one of the two spins. But I think out here, there's a way to squeak out a solid round. Oh, nice shot from Evelina. That took some sort of weird ground play. We actually have mulch provided by the same people that mulched the course last week. And a disc golfer, a local disc golfer by the name of Austin McNabb started a mulching business with his brother and it's called Mulch in Place. And basically the stuff that's in the way gets cut up and just dropped it right there on the spot. So the mulch you're seeing was not brought in. That is like all the clearing that they had to do to create this course. Yeah, this place was pretty rough for quite some time just being a brand new plot of land they had to cut into. It looks phenomenal. I uh, actually have had the opportunity and pleasure of playing with one of the co four co-founders over the last two days. And we played this property here and we went and played a little league ground in town. And um, just talking about, you know, like how much disc golf has meant to him. And he even took a break for a little while to focus on his job as a working in marketing with the, the company. But, um, you know, when they, when they decided to move to this property here and they saw all the land that they had available to them. It was just like one of those got to take advantage of this type of moments. And here we are, major championship. You know, and then Mike Ols, I, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name, mm -hmm. guy who designed uh, Roy G and all those phenomenal sure. Austin courses, gets to put his little spin on this property. It's probably a dream come true for him. Yeah, Michael's a very well-known designer in these parts here in Texas. A good mixture of fair, challenging, and um, a little bit annoying too. In a good, in a good way though. Yeah. In the, in a way that if you like a good challenge, you know, the rough is is suited to give you a, a good challenge. That's for sure. Let's see how Holland bounces back after the costly double bogey. This would be an insane par if Cat could hit this long one after the, hitting the mandatory right off the tee. <laughs> that is a nice heck try. Of, and honestly, a good bogey to take. She wasn't far after two shots, and she was still in the woods. Okay. Was that? That was for that birdie. That was for birdie. Rebecca just got the last two holes. She's at six under. What, what do you think the hot round on the weekend is going to be? You think someone's going to crack into double digits here if, if the weather cleans up? Yeah, you know, it obviously it really is heavily dependent on the wind. Uh, I hear that the wind is pretty typically uh, a big factor of the course, especially when you get to some of the open holes where the out of bounds comes into play. I think that if the wind stays down and it doesn't rain, I think somewhere in the eight to 10 range is possible. I think that over the course of four rounds, if you shoot 25 under, you're going to be looking really good for the title. I agree. If And that's with good wind. I mean, that's with good conditions. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if Rebecca finishes at six and goes six, 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 that's, mm -hmm. that's a fantastic weekend. And that is low for Kristen. So an opening bogey for her and for Cat Merch. Hold it's given a lot of players fits. Nice touch. And that will be for par for Holland.
So the opening holes on this course. Wow. Some of the holes here are averaging 1.3. Two holes average 1.38 over par. Why do you think that is? This is such a short course compared to Whoa. what they see on tour. Is it just that, that the juniper forest is just so thick and, and tough to manu maneuver? I mean, certainly that has a big factor of it. I, I I think that the rough is just really tricky. I think that there's some nerves here. The first mm -hmm. major of the year. Um, I think that those scores, you know, I think that we hope that they'll be mm -hmm. closer to 0.75 over par by the end of the week as long, you know, as they get comfortable with the track. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are four holes right now that officially average a full stroke over par. And each one of those, there are six holes that don't even have a single birdie on them yet. But that being oh. said, that is really nice. You just love a nice turnover. <laughs> <laughs> prettiest shot in the game. It's the prettiest shot in the game. My question for you is, What's prettier, a late flipping forehand turnover Ooh. or a late flipping backhand turnover? Oh, man. I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right, Ryan? Um, <laughs> that's, that's why I'm asking you. You're the beholder. Well, I, for me, if I see a really nice backhand that just looks like it was thrown from like 50 feet left of me and it's going just way right, you know, it doesn't look like yeah. it came from the perspective where I'm standing. It's just a beautiful turn that holds all the way to the ground. I mean, I think that that is flight in its purest, most beautiful form. But I mean, I think maybe some people might see my forehand or your forehand and see and say the same thing about what we do. But the backhand turnover just holds much longer. We got, yeah, we're, so we're going to, are we going to a question here? Or are we? Oh. <laughs> Oh, tell me how to watch final round. Okay, so yeah, here we go. We're working through the kinks here. Uh, so yeah, the, we're going to have the first round, right? Like we're doing right now. And then the final round. And rounds two and three, you're, you're going to be reduced to no companion stream. So don't even ask for it because it's not going to be available. But we will have the final round of championship round will be here with us as a companion stream on, what was that? Oh, DGN Pro. Oh, so you can't watch it here on YouTube. Got it. So, yeah, you have to have a Disc Golf Network Pro membership. See? <laughs> Brian. This was, all, this was all part of a character he's doing for this ad read. It's one of the best ad reads I've ever heard because it was right on the script. I really delivered the, the confusion as, as if it was genuine. It was nicely done. Thank you very much. It's not easy to do that. But, um, yeah, so like we said, we, we you know. We're going to have some questions coming in here at some point. And so at any time you guys feel like you want to ask Brian or I some questions, please send them in and we will have someone screening questions. So don't be a nitty. <laughs> don't be a dummy. But um, we are, we're free to answer your good questions if you have them. Your good questions. Yeah, your good questions. Oh. That's pretty. That is money spot right there what i love about kristen's forehand is it always comes out with like a tiny like techie flip up in the mid flight and then it checks up at the end she's mm -hmm. like eh, I'm, I'm i'm pretty good yeah she's not really going for the full all the way flip up shots that uh yeah they can get that maximum amount of distance but also potentially bring in the danger of the touchiness of mm -hmm. an overflip so it is like very much controlled yet like minimalistically aggressive. Just the tiniest flip, doesn't get to flat, fades out at the end. Mm -hmm. Very easy to predict where that shot's gonna go. You think Missy checked for any critters underneath the bridge before she got up there? I just hope she left a dollar or two. I mean, you gotta pay the troll toll. I remember we played World. What about this course for you, Germ? How, what, what percentage of forehand, backhand do you feel like you were throwing out here? Pretty heavily forehand on on this type of course. When I get in the woods, I, I you know I just typically turn off the backhand brain. Mm -hmm. um, you know I love a course that challenges both the forehand and backhand, but if if I'm staying within like a ten to fifteen foot window, 
you know, I'm typically going to be standing yeah. facing the target, delivering a forehand. Mm-hmm. What about you? I think it depends for sure. I think, I think back to like uh, Reedy Creek or something in Charlotte, where mm-hmm. it's just super short, super technical. I think most of the time I'm going to be throwing a forehand if I'm playing a tournament. Yeah, I think th- there are enough holes that really favor a, a, a backhand drive mm-hmm. that I think. Again, you can't just get away with one shot. You exactly. have to be multiple. You have to have all the shots. Take a look at some of the. Been a while in Texas. Oh, these are the former major championships that have occurred here. Obviously, 1994, Elaine King, one of the three players who are five-time FPO Worlds champions. Becky Powell, Worlds in Port Arthur. It's always interesting, Germ, to look back at some of those uh, world records in like the WIFDIF archives that, that say someone that you've never heard of that set a record in 1992 mm-hmm. that hasn't been broken since. I think the U13 women's distance r- world record okay. is like 403 feet and was set in 1992. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. 13 years old? FP. Yeah. The Someone from California did it at La Mirada. 13 years old through 402 feet. Yeah. Brian, the fact that you know that is the reason why you're sitting in that chair <laughs> well, right now, my friend. We, we interviewed MJ Gager, who's a, she's playing 15U. Yeah. Um, and she was like a 12U champion, mm-hmm. set the distance record for 12U. And then I looked to see, oh, what does she have next? And I was like, where did this come from? <laughs> Like, did she set it on the beach with the wind rolling off? Three 13-year-olds just in California. That they're like, hey, you should try throwing one of these things. Yeah, no one even thought about steroids back then, Germ. So, (laughs) (laughs) not not saying that that happened, but yeah, hey, that's a little yeah. Could have been a strong 13-year-old. I mean, must have been. Goodness gracious, 13. I don't even think I could have dreamt of. I mean, I wasn't play. I didn't play disc golf until I was 20. Look at that shot from Haley. Yeah, that's working. Solid. And Haley's uh, going to be watching the knee this week. She's had some slips over the past few tournaments that have kind of messed up that backhand throwing knee on the right side. Mm-hmm. So I think the forehand, you know, being something that works on this course pretty well, I think she's going to lean on it pretty heavily. Germ, here's a question from the, from the audience right here, Germ. Okay. You want You want to answer one? Yeah, sure. Of course. Germ, like does commentary affect your performance during the round oh, that's next a, day? Man, this is this is like a podcast question. I feel like I could go into like a thirty to forty minute answer about this. Um, well, it's the companion stream. Yeah, we got plenty of time to kill, huh? Um, yeah, I mean, I I think that there was a, a time, you know, when I started commentary in twenty seventeen, um, and. Uh, actually, my very first round was March 18th, 2017. Um, I believe it was the uh, Nick Hyde Memorial, I want to say. Is that right? Waco. Waco. Yeah, I'm sorry. W- Nick Hyde was when I worked with Big Sexy for the first time. Anyhow. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyways, Waco 2017 with, um, with Simon and Eagle. And obviously, I went on to win that tournament. Um, and I felt like, man, this is like a really cool way to do two things that I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously I'm going to be out here on tour playing disc golf, but doing the commentary, you know, that's, um, I feel like I could fill the air with a lot of information from the stories that I've gathered and from the personal relationships I have with people on tour and coming from a perspective of someone who's one at the highest mm-hmm. level, like, you know, this is kind of a neat thing for me to do. And then it became so fun that I think I really focused <laughs> so much on trying to improve with the craft. Um, and I still put a lot of emphasis, eph- emphasis on that as I struggle with saying a word. Um, Ephesism. Ephesism, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but I, I think what really has made um, made it difficult is just I'm balancing more things in my, mm-hmm. my life. And so like when I was winning tournaments, when I was actually like finishing in the top 10 on tour, I disc golf was the only thing Mm -hmm. you know and as soon as you start thinking about five six things on top of the one thing that you really love the most and then you realize well like i love these things too and then you know you're not quite as narrowly focused and um we've actually talked a lot about that with uh, pete sampras in his book talking about single-mindedness and uh, relationships as they involve other people and you know then trying to take care of your own thing as an athlete but then also worrying about all these other things so 
yeah, staying in, staying focused on disc golf while trying to do other things is it's always been a bad. It sounds like a love hate, like doing both, <laughs> you know. But there's been no regrets about doing, of course, the commentating. Yeah, you know that part right there. Like I can go onto the course and have just a day where nothing went well and walk away feeling so dejected and then come into the booth and do, and then see like my best buds. And then we, mm-hmm. you know, we, we talk about our rounds and we have a good time. We kind of have a little therapy sesh where we like hash it all <laughs> out, you know, and that happens before we press record, you hit this red button right here and we get going. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, there's never been a time when I've left the booth feeling bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I know so exactly what you mean. It's just, it's, it's a really fun thing that I have an amazing privilege to be able to do. Well, Ian Thompson, there's your answer. First fan question. And we're going to actually, we're going to give this, uh, this privilege to Jonathan. I think moving forward, we're going to have him screen some questions. So if you want to ask a really good question, make sure that you say something nice about Jonathan first, and then he'll, mm-hmm. he'll be sure to pay attention to your questions. I would start it by saying Jonathan dot, 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 sweet, sweet boy, sweet, sweet boy, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And then ask your question. That's my thought. That just, he loves that. <laughs> he's smirking. You got some water, buddy. I'd love some water. I gotta get some water to this do, guy. do we have a ginger ale? I see you holding a ginger ale right there. Ah, it was a one-off. Own sitting at plus one. Well, it's not too bad after starting off with a double bogey yeah. on. So at least yeah. she's trying to get things back in the right place. Hannah coming up short from about 14 feet. Always something, unfortunately, that you got to keep an eye on. You know, it's maybe one of the best throwers of the disc I've ever seen. And when, if and when that gets sorted mm-hmm. out, and it doesn't even have to be making 30 footers. No. It's just if she cleans up 25 and in. Thank you. I think she'll be the number one. Well, she'll be contending with this one right here for the number one ring. Every player. week. Every week. Every single. But, I mean, that's yeah. that's why that's she's so part? impressive. Yes. That's why Kristen's so impressive. Yep. Kind of reminds me of uh, Macbeth, Prime Macbeth in a way, mm-hmm. where he self-admittedly was never the best in any category. Mm-hmm. He just was took a lot of pride in being top five in everything. Yeah, I feel like he was good at the intangibles, like clutch factor, stuff like that you can't quantify with mm-hmm. stats. Everyone would say he was the best at that, but you can't measure it by, like you said, putting percentage, fairway hits, things like that. Did you ever feel any different going into uh, a major championship than any other event? Did it have a different level of preparation for you? I I, I did because I needed it. (laughs) I did because I needed those tournaments to go well. And when you listen to Kristen talk and say, my goal is to take all meaning out of the tier of event that I play. I feel like I didn't, I don't know if I didn't know that, but I I felt like I couldn't do that. I felt like I had to be on my game, but you know, the same thing that, that I know some weeks you put in a little bit of practice and you play phenomenal. Some weeks you put in a ton of practice and you play terrible. You never can quite base your performance based on preparation, but it feels like, yeah, like naturally you're like, okay, I want to win this tournament, so I'm going to put extra extra practice in. I think that the main thing is we're seeing a nice little forehand turnover from Christy. What a beautiful shot. That is awesome. In the bullseye, too. That'll be a tap in birdie. Heck, yeah. That, that was, was amazing. That was sweet. I, I, you know, you want to be process-oriented and not results-oriented. Because mm-hmm. you're talking about you know, 2017, when I showed up to Waco, I played one practice round. I played with some random people that were just playing the course casually. Sick. Awesome shot from Evelina, <laughs> also in bullseye. Um, and then I went on to win the event because I was in a good place mentally. And it's just weird how like I go back the next year and I play like a lot more practice rounds. I win again and then I go back in other years and I think, okay, what what is the right amount of preparation? Yeah. And then you're going back and forth on it. And I think the main thing is, you know, if this is your career, just do the same thing every event. And then I, I'm kind of on the same boat as Evelina. I mean, not Evelina, uh, as Kristen. Mm-hmm. Take the tear out of it. You know, a shot is a shot and you're putting your stamp of approval on each shot that you throw. Mm-hmm. This You're saying, this is my product. This is what I can do. And then it's up to you to execute in the moment. And um, it's hard to be uh, 
I don't know, that consistent across the board for an entire mm-hmm. season. But yeah, I, I, I like what she has to say about that. I've got a quick question. Oh, all right, all right Jonathan. I think Shoot. Steven Gergen was uh, asked about how you guys as players or how these ladies might be feeling about having a major this early in the season. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's not the earliest major we've ever had. We've had a the Australian Open in January yeah. in 2017. Oh, um, when you had wombat fever. When I had the wombat fever. You got fever. bit by a wombat? No, I did not get bit <laughs> That's by not a wombat. not transmitted? <laughs> no, it was a sickness that just happened. I think it probably came from the flight over, and then 24 hours after I was there, I was sick for an entire week, and I didn't even get to play the Australian Open. <laughs> it was miserable. Um, but anyways, this early in the season, that's a good question. Um you know, I think that since we're three events in, like I feel like we're in the swing of things. Mm-hmm. You know, we've just come off of back-to-back elite series events, so it's not like there's been a long break in activity. Um, these women are ready to go. I think that a major now is just as valid as a major in the summer mm-hmm. as a major in the fall. Yeah, I, I have to agree, too. And I know, you know, back-to-back-to-back weeks are, n- are never fun, yeah. you know, when you're trying to play at the top level, but... They're already in Austin. They're already in Texas. They have had ample time to come out here and practice the courses. It's not like the beast is changing. It's not like, right. you know, Harvey Pennock changed a lot. But once you see the course, you kind of get a lot of, of what you need to do because it's on a traditional golf course. So I know Owen came out here previously and Owen was practicing this course. Yeah, quite so, a bit. So as much as it's back to back to back weeks, the players are still here in Texas. They're not having to spend Monday as a drive day. Um, and I've talked to quite a few players, and they're really excited. I think that they they love the spike of adrenaline that comes from having a big tournament like this come when they're still fresh, when they're not you know mid to late season, the burnout phase uh, that that world's usually falls in. Well, that's paying off for Jennifer Allen right now, who is in first place in FP40 as she has a four-stroke lead after round one. I know that she uh, and I talked a, a bit about how much preparation she's put into this course, and she's been coming out here for weeks. Uh, really? She, yeah, she's come out here different times. Uh, she, you know, When she came out to play Waco, she spent a little time here at first, and then last week she spent a little time out here. So... Um, yeah, I, I don't think that the early season major thing is, is too big of an issue for any of these women. And that was a very strange mistake from Kristen. You don't usually see her screw up that shot. That's like the bread and butter chip shot forehand with the approach disc. I believe she's throwing a harp there. Hmm. Well, Rebecca currently sitting at six under with a three-shot lead going into the second shot on this tricky par five it's like a layup zone and then another layup zone and then a tight tunnel all the way down to a basket that is on a ridge okay uh yeah there is a railroad tied there to protect a shot going left as long as that wasn't too hot i think she'll be fine i think it was fine thank you for the questions guys and girls please keep them coming we will continue to incorporate that as we move on i'm picking up the fact that i might have vetted the first question um too early <laughs> no i think it's fine okay i mean we, yeah. i'm safe brian brian uh was obviously at the course you were doing some interview stuff and working with dgn on the uh pre-show what was what were yeah you? tournament central is a is a the pre central, okay. mid-round and post-show kind of a talking heads deal Ooh. That's... It wasn't a mistake. It was a setup to practice her circle two putting. <laughs> well done. Perfect. Yeah, so you, you didn't get the uh, the pre-tournament um, rundown of how we were going to be vetting the, the the questions. But no, you, by all means, man, if you got the, the chat pulled up, if you see a good question, man, go for it. Do I do I have to go ahead, Jonathan? Oh, I love fan questions. <laughs> I just only reason I I didn't want to do that. I wanted Jonathan to, to be our moderator was just so I could watch the action and enjoy it with you guys. But um, yeah, if we well, got two people. You, you but, guys know when to interject between the two of you better than I do because I think this will be great. Right there, so there's no rules. There's no rules. This is Joe Mascas. This is Outback. Just right. Just, just like Outback. You get you a blooming <laughs> onion and you'll be right. 
When was the last time you had Outback Steakhouse? Be yeah. honest with me. My sister's family wants to go there for every one of her kids' birthdays, so I go there quite often. It's oh. a tradition. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love for, it. for me, okay. it's probably been a decade. Same. Not sponsored, by the way. Not yet. Not sponsored because I haven't been there in a decade <laughs> for a reason. I like the Bloomin' Onion, I will say. Yeah, Bloomin' Onion is bomb. Dude. I like the idea of it. <laughs> <laughs> Putt goes in for Henna. And Missy Gannon through five holes, three under, and that's that's a tough stretch to get to three under. So that's a oh a good start for her. Did she bite bite her forearm germ? Bite her forearm. Did you see that? No, I, I missed that. I was looking down. Ah. To you don't want to bite your. Not forearm. sure what that was. It's too early in the tournament to be biting your forearm. You want to do that the back nine. So once again, this is round one of the first major of the year at the 2024 United States Women's Disc Golf Championship presented by Mint Discs. Um, we have the first round as a gift to you for free on the Jomez Pro YouTube channel. Obviously, you're watching that right now. But if you want to watch the championship broadcast on Sunday, that is going to be on DGN Pro. So make sure if you aren't signed up for that, get signed up if you enjoy this broadcast. Missy on another one of these tough turnover shots. But again, I love the turnover. Look Brian, at this. Dialed. Dialed, dude. What a shot. Mm. Oh, that's hole, what, six? Yeah. That was really good. 306 feet, blind up the hill. Oh, she's going mid. Okay. I like the idea of mid here for Evelina. She's got so much power and also that result. <laughs> Goodness. The strategy here in hole six, Germ, is to bullseye the hole. I mean, I feel like Evelina has been kind of doing that every time someone else does it. Yeah. Good for her. Okay. Obviously, obviously she's off to a hot start this season. Ooh, a little high for Cynthia. Did you see her uh, YouTube show with the, uh, the with Try, Try guys? guys? Yeah. So good. She performed. Yeah so well and she gave them the business which i really appreciated i i think i i noticed that i think she's a pretty big fan of them to begin with so she knows the vibe of the channel and was yeah. able to buy into it it was perfect and they bought into it too which i loved yes and she told me that they randomly found her she did not contact that's them. awesome they found her they said you know we vetted a lot of disc golfers and you look like the one that would fit really well in this the show and she's like are you kidding me? Okay. I've been watching you for eight years or whatever it is. Oh, that was such a sick looking shot from Henna, just overturned by the, the width of a tree. It it shows how late this turnover has to be. Because I thought that was late flipping, and it still was two inside. For those not in the know, the caddy that Henna has on the bag is Jonathan Poole, the tournament director of the United States Disc Golf Championship. And he has caddied for her at Worlds and the USWDGC in the past, and he has been such a big support role for Henna and both of the, um, her and Evelina, he has just been there the whole time and a big part of why we actually have disc golf teams. He was the original founder of, the, of Team Innova before there was a team anything. So shout out to Jonathan Poole and everything he's done for disc golf. It's good to see him out here. I already can't wait for USDGC. Man, I can't wait to get back, man. I was injured last year, couldn't play. It was such a bummer. But obviously, it was so cool to see Kyle get his first oh, major. Yeah. Yeah. And Holland, even though it's technically an A tier, I think that it is the Players' Championship of A tiers as far as, you know, in golf, they're trying sure. to, they call that the fifth major. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what the U.S., the Throw Pink Championship is for the women. Okay, Haley, a little too high. You know, what do you think about this, oh, Germ? What do you think about me trying to get a week off work? Um, and <laughs> well, yeah. What do you I'm not your boss, What man. do you think about that? Maybe, maybe can I'm, I take off the yeah, week? Yeah, you got to do. Thanks. <laughs> Overtime. <laughs> I was Time thinking maybe I do Monday qualifying this year <laughs> yeah, at I'll USDGC, take, huh? Yeah, I mean, comet I feel, only. I feel like you should just have an automatic invite just because you're Brian Earhart. Ah, well. If they look at my previous finishes there, they should not invite me automatically. <laughs> I've had one okay performance there. but I, I think, I, you know, you know what's best for you. And you have followed your your passion to becoming the media person that you have become. And 
I think that you're just terrific at it. Thank you, man. But I've also played disc golf with you a couple times in the last year or so, and uh, I could still do it. You got game, bro. Thank you. It's it's like one of those situations where I'm like, did Barry Sanders retire too soon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like Barry Sanders retired maybe a season or two too soon. Yeah, but. I am kind of Barry Sanders, aren't I? <laughs> no, you got no. Those, you got those quick cuts. No. I didn't see what, what Rebecca did there. Um, but either way, Missy now at four under only through six holes. Goodness, she's off to an incredible start. Oh, here we go, Germ. All right, what do we got? What event, Jeremy, are you most looking forward to commentating slash playing this year? That's, that is a question, as a recurring question that I get asked, and I don't know if I've ever had a good answer. <laughs> uh, because it, I, I, you know, as far as commentating, it doesn't change for me. Like, I feel like I can find the drama and the intensity mm -hmm. of every event and treat it each one equally. Mm -hmm. But as far as playing and commentating, like, I've had some success. Um, more recently at Idlewild over the last couple of years. Love Idlewild. And the, 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 the shapes of the holes really suit the part of my game that I think I might have the m best chance of being competitive slash putting things together mm -hmm. and maybe winning. Um, I think that that place always is really special to me and LWS being my tax people and being just close friends of mine and being the title sponsor of that event in the past. Uh, it's, it's just good vibes out there in the uh, the Burlington mm -hmm. area, the Cincinnati I agree. area. Um, so I always look forward to that one. But I mean, it really is hard to beat going to Europe and playing disc golf. Mm -hmm. um, the style of the design, the culture, the the people, the fans, the um, just being in a new place, mm -hmm. being in a foreign place, uh, and then playing disc golf is it's just a. a, a Every year, it's a reminder. It's just a treat to do it, and it's a reminder mm -hmm. of how cool it is to have the job that I have. I was going to say, Europe, Europe, Europe is my choice, too. And I, it, it, half of it is because I learn about all these new players that I haven't <laughs> heard of before, and it's so cool. And now it's awesome that there's so many women from Europe already over here. There's yeah. women from Estonia other than Kristen. There's other Finns out here, mm -hmm. and they're playing good. I mean, uh, Haiti... Uh, uh, what's what was her? What am I saying? Heidi Lina. Yeah, Heidi Lina. She shot a phenomenal round last weekend, and she was stoked. She was over the moon, and she's another player that's coming up that I feel like is going to be a threat in, in years to come. Um, and then Henna Evelina still having success over here. This has just been this has been awesome stuff. Yeah, we've got two international players currently in the top ten, and neither one of them are Kristen Zatar. So that right there tells you something. But yeah, I mean, the the, the see, seeing the international contention, um, in just and not just the MPO field, mm -hmm. but also in the FPO field is, it's pretty cool to see. As Cat Merch is starting to get Matt Merch mad, as she that's Matt a, Merch that was a bad one. That was a bad <laughs> one. But uh, yeah, she's gonna be two over early. Oh boy. Yeah, but you know this is a hard stretch of holes that Missy was able to conquer with her. Uh, four under through six, but I mean, it's getting more players mm -hmm. over par than it is under par. How many times did you walk slash play the course? Uh, I walked through it two times. I I, uh, I saw the course on video played three times. Because, I, you know, only seeing it one time through, uh, there are going to be some holes where I'm going to need to I got really you. pay attention to what's going on to remember exactly what the shape is. But just from memory, it is a lot of just hit your initial line and get 300 feet mm -hmm. or so into a good landing zone is going to be the ticket. I, I was telling Perks this morning what I like about the design here. It's kind of why I like the design at Roy G. Um, it's no surprise that Mike Olds designed both of them. You get dog legs but you get varying degrees of dog legs here. You have some really sharp dog leg left, sharp dog leg right, subtle dog leg left, subtle dog leg right. So the players have to kind of draw out multiple uh, skills and shapes from their arsenal. So um, that's why I like this course at the length that it is right now. But as we move forward to hole number 17, we see that they're playing on turf, Jordan. Oh, nice shot. Beautiful shot from Jordan Lenz. Yeah. 
we see that they're playing on turf. Got a fan question. I would love to get some more info on these tee pads. I hear a lot of pros commenting on how slick they are in the rain. Germ, are there any tee pads that are not slick in the rain? Let, like, let, let's talk about that. Is there ever an answer for wet, wet conditions? That's a good question. Um, rain makes turf look like a silly choice uh, as we see nice. Rebecca hit the base over that wall and you can see kind of that narrow out of bounds area there um, that was originally intended to be all out of bounds up until the island and then the PDJ said no, we can't have that <laughs> so they really wanted it to be quite tough but I think if you come on a random weekday that area is oh island. god um, but anyway that yeah you have to land in there yeah I know it's tricky and that is that a par for Rebecca I believe that was a par Let's okay double check here but to answer the question yeah. um, the best thing you can do I think if you have turf tee pad surface is um, to make sure it's well sanded mm -hmm. have have some grit in there because um, when it's just the turf itself that the rain really makes it tough to plant and trust um, I, but I would say, you know, a, a well-raked concrete tee pad is, I agree. is just the best. I mean, it's what yeah. we learned how to play on, and it's just proven over the years to be the surface that you can trust the most. I also like concrete, especially from an operations standpoint, because you can blow torch it. They were doing that in Charlotte uh, last year, tour yeah, championship. Right. <laughs> Big money, Missy. Another great shot. Narrowly avoiding that one tree he was heading towards. Ooh, going inside backhand hyzer flip. Oh, that was nasty. That was a crazy line. Was that intended? I don't know, but it was nasty. <laughs> that flipped quick. That was a we'll assume it was shot. on purpose. I mean, yeah, maybe maybe she's trying to go as far left. I think if you see where Kristen is, I think intending that forehand. OB to go. is coming up soon here. Oh, that was nice. You can go backhand hyzer on the right good side, breaks. yeah, good breaks. But then the inside flick puts you towards the OB, which is actually favorable. Evelina also off to an awesome start. She is three under through six. She is in third, tied with two other players, Natalie Ryan and Holland Hammer. Oh boy, that is instant bogey. Instant bogey at best. See if Kat can get some things going in the right direction for her. She's kind of seems like a little off timing. That looked like a better, a better release. Not the result she was looking for, but a better release. <laughs> and the rain is coming down a decent amount. There is supposed to be lightning in the forecast i'm hoping that Man, it's wrong we just can't avoid that i think we're four for four gosh it like have you ever felt like the b bad weather just follows this whore or is that just like it, it makes me feel a couple things germ okay does the bad weather follow us or are we following the bad weather <laughs> <laughs> like is there some sort of like Fair. weather pattern that we're not tracking and maybe we should come back to texas at a different time of year do you remember you mentioned the nick hyde memorial do you remember uh -huh. for like three or four years straight it mm -hmm. just got absolutely demolished by bad weather yeah i do remember that and then i also remember how it's been like nearly a decade decade straight where we've gone to either the gbo or the dynamic discs open in april when the seasonal winds are just uh, nearly unplayable, yet we still continue to oh, have... Oh, they're playable. <laughs> it's, it's a different sport out there, for sure. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Nick Hyde used to get ripped up with just thunderstorms. Um, I believe Macbeth was the second player to be the beneficiary of a, at least in the MPO side, of a shortened final round or a canceled final mm. round. Where he, um, you know, everyone gave me a hard time for it in the 2016 USCGC, but then, you know, Macbeth got the win at McHyde because of that, <laughs> <laughs> and no one said anything. <laughs> and now it's, uh, it's, you know, happened a couple times with Calvin Heimberg and Ricky sharing the Ledgestone title a few years ago, and um, 
You know, sometimes the pioneers don't get their, their banana pudding, Jern. <laughs> I want my pudding. <laughs> That's what they say, right? That's what they... I've never heard that expression ever, nah. but I love it. Ah, well. Maybe it's a new one. Merch plus two through five. I just think I think someone's gonna catch fire over the next four rounds and shoot double digits. Oh, this is heading right towards that out yeah. of bounds. There's one little uh, ravine of OB, and you gotta clear that. This is where we mm -hmm. saw um, Christy Fountain for that beautiful lefty flick into Bullseye, and Evelina backed it up a moment mm -hmm. after. I just remember watching a course of this caliber, at least in design, you know, 80, 8,600 feet, par 63 in Norway when, when they played the Sula there okay. at Overos and just thinking to myself, why are all these courses 10, 11,000 feet? Oh nice putt from Missy. Gosh. This is some major champion golf Jeez. right here. Five through seven. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh is right to the field just over the rim but a tricky little uh obstructed straddle putt does not bother missy at all okay so th this should be the bread and butter she early released it on the previous hole but made a great putt see if she can get over on it yeah, this is a really technical approach here and it's a little scary you're going over that out of bounds mm -hmm. ravine and you, you just kind of feel like if you miss this shot at all, you're going to hit a tree and go OB. She's going for the big high, Annie. Finds the open space, executes a nice one into just outside the circle. Jerm, I got another fan question for you. Bring it on, man. Other than the boss, what is your favorite disc? Uh... The boss isn't my favorite disc. Um, the boss is up there. It's probably a top five, but there's really no question if you ever play with me in the woods and you see how often I'm throwing the AVRX3, it's like that thing is like an extension of my soul. <laughs> like like I, I create a shot shape in my head and then the AVRX3 just does it. Um, and and that's kind of wild to me that more players aren't using that disc. I mean, I know that's a popular mold, but like even more, like I feel like it, it, you know, if you learn how to keep your palm up throwing that thing forehand, I mean, the sky's the limit on what that thing can do for you. I feel like that slot of disc, the like not much glide, slightly overstable approach disc, it has the spirit of Frisbee somewhere in there. It's in there. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not one of those like, um, like ridiculously overstable discs where it doesn't require a little bit of touch. It still requires finesse and mm -hmm. it requires uh you know an understanding of stability like you can get over on it with a little bit of anheuser you can uh keep the nose up with a little hyzer you can throw it nice and flat and level but you can't just like you know i call it like chopping down a tree you know you can't just lumberjack that mm -hmm. disc to work like some of the other I, I mean there's like i'm not trying to call out any discs and say that they're bad but like when i think about how overstable like uh a justice is or a zone os or something like that like that requires like Actual that's a trick shot intentional, disc. Yeah, yeah, right. That's a trick shot disc. Whereas the AVRX3 is just like a functional approach that's a little bit more torque resistant than your typical putter. So it lends itself well to approaches. But I mean, without question, the AVRX3 mm -hmm. is my favorite disc. And what then, about you? I want to ask me? you Me? Yeah. Comet. You know yeah, it's the Comet germ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the spirit of Frisbee lives deep within the Comet. And you can do some of the coolest things with a high ceiling because the comet loves being thrown high mm -hmm. other any other disc that i've ever cam thrown. todd used to call it the fastest disc this craft ever made <laughs> just because it glided at one point forever. yeah oh yeah of, I, of course he he put uh he put a comet in my hands in the 2013 world championships when we went back to lemon lake and it was Macbeth's second world title and there's like a 450 foot hole and he was like throw a comet here and i was like i'm not gonna throw a comet here I threw a comet and chained out for the ace and i was like <laughs> yep, i think it's the exactly. fastest disc ever made <laughs> it yep. just glides forever but yeah um next question though okay. while the skill of players has improved how do you feel about courses being designed with the intention of players shooting over par hmm 
Man, that's another podcast question. I think it's a deeper question. These, than, are, these are deep dive yeah. questions. And I, I appreciate them because I think that um, course design is probably the thing that we as professional disc golfers, the people who are directly affected cool. financially due to how we play on these courses, like, you know, anyone can have an opinion of a course, but when it comes down to it, like lining your pockets, whether or not you're, you can eat, you get real particular about course design. So it's uh -huh. something we talk about quite a bit on tour. And so we're, we're all very adamant about our own design preferences and whatnot. Um, and, you know, and kind of being in this like era where we've bridged the gap between the par three courses and like the nineties disc golf, which, you know, was way before my time. Uh, but as that kind of developed into what we see today, where it's more golf oriented, mm -hmm. the par fours, par fives, um, you know, we've run into some different walls where it's like, we realize that there's a certain amount of, of challenge that you can add before it becomes gimmicky, mm -hmm. where it becomes too much of a challenge where it's like, you don't want to see birdies that you design this to be so hard that it doesn't even make sense. Now for me as a player slash someone who looks at this as course design, as a designer who has never like officially designed a permanent course, but I, I think that I am a d disc golf course designer. You know what I mean? Like I treat each new track and each new hole that I've played as if I'm a course designer and I'm trying to break it down. Mm -hmm. And what I want to see from a course designer, ideally, is a, de a design that makes so much sense that the designer could describe it in words, write it down on a piece of paper even. I could read that anecdote about the course, about the whole itself, and I could see visually what I was in, what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you don't have to lay out every single tree in its placement, but like mm -hmm. the concept of this shot is challenging, this shot shape, and this landing zone. And then from there you have to do this certain thing. And if you can describe it to me and I can see it, smell it, feel it, and I can almost play it just with my imagination, then I think that you've achieved a quality disc golf hole design. The problem that we run into is because people don't like seeing 13, 14 under shot on their course, is that a lot of course designers are making courses so difficult that I think they lose that element of how a hole can be dissected. Mm -hmm. And when a hole can't be dis dissected verbally, then I think that you're running into a problem. I don't see an issue with great disc golfers shooting great scores. Mm -hmm. If a great score is 14 under, that doesn't necessarily have to be a problem because you look at the bottom end, there are also disc golfers that are shooting six over. That it's the best on that back. same track that same day. Back. Yeah, I think I'd have to agree with you. I also think um, if you break it down into par threes, especially with a par four design, I, I want the designer to know what a hard par three is for that division. Mm -hmm. So say it's a 400 foot tunnel shot. That's totally fine. And if you go 400 foot tunnel shot to a, a nice healthy landing zone to another 400 foot tunnel shot, that's fine. Mm -hmm. If you can go to that landing zone and put down like three different T pads, so to speak, for the second yeah, shot. Yeah, like theoretical T pads. And all three of them make sense. Yeah, right. I don't want there to be one specific spot in a landing right. zone that you can throw the line from. So that's, that's what I think. I think shooting over par can mean a few things on a course. But if, if it, the, you walk through the hole and you go, oh, yeah, these are fair, but just really hard technical shots mm -hmm. that the pro players will be challenged on, that's fine. But when you throw a hole and you're like, eh, I was five feet off the landing zone, I can't, I can't birdie from here. I, and you see it. You see it all the time. I, I'm all for gimmicky greens as long as the hole is uh, somewhat on the shorter mm -hmm. nature. You know, If you are going to have a hole that is going to be a 450-foot shot that is then challenged by trees surrounding a green – you know, and maybe there's like a row of trees that are 50 feet short and I just executed the shot, but I was off by an inch or, you know, a foot or whatever. But on that length of a shot, mm -hmm. there's got to be some leeway. There's got to be some play. Right. Yeah. And so I think that that gets lost sometimes in the effort to try to create these courses that produce closer to par scores. I don't think that we need to be looking at closer to par. I think that we just need to look at what shot the more quality of the not, shots. Yeah. Oh, like, like that. that. Yeah. Like that right there. Yep. Hey, you know, if if a quality shot is executed, is it rewarded or not? Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. That's what it ultimately comes down to. Let's take a look at this again. Going right side. I thought it was overturned. Is she going inside here? I, that's the Evelina line going with a turnover as opposed to the more of the Heiser play that we saw with mm -hmm. Missy. And yeah, I mean, yeah, the only way that it went outside was outside that one tree right by the basket. I think that everything else was down the fairway. Ooh, going a lot higher, more turned. 
That's not going to be it, is it? Mm, yeah. Not unless she can make an obstructed putt from 35 feet. Let's see how Haley's knee... Oh, no, she's going to the forehand. Okay. So it's just affecting her backhand most. Yeah, because that's what you're bracing on. This right. looks great, though. It's got to keep going right, though. Yeah, that's going to get a good skip outside in C2. Mm-hmm. Well done. Thank you for these great questions, guys. Keep them coming. Really appreciate it. Yep. There you surprise, go. Surprise, surprise, folks. Owen drills one from deep. Have you ever watched her putting sessions? Uh, I, I can't last the whole... I don't have four hours, but yeah. I've watched her practice. I, we we were camped at a similar place in North Carolina last year, and uh, she had her uh, traveler basket, and she just had a stack of, like, eight putters in her hand, and we are just having a casual conversation. She didn't break focus one time, fluttered every putt from 35 feet in, grabbed them, continued the conversation, did it again, the set went on for, like, four sets of every single putt coming out with the same amount of flutter. And, Brian, I don't know if you've ever tried to putt with flutter. I can't do it. I can't not. You, you're a flutter but guy. But not a spin putt. Right. A spin putt flutter is, is wild to me. She, it's a very interesting style that she has developed, but it is effective, clearly. And we we got to give Chrissy Fountain her, her kudos because it seems like every time she's been on camera, she's done something cool. She gave us the yeah. flex forehand. She gave Heck us yeah. the huge circle's edge putt there. Have yourself a day, Chrissy Fountain. No kidding. Another mover and shaker in Texas disc golf. Be awesome to see Haley get on the board here with a birdie. Slow start through five. Not quite connected yet with body and intention. Long tournament. Long tournament. No doubt. And on a tough course like this, you know, it's one thing when it's a, a shorter track and you feel like every birdie that you miss is a lost opportunity. But on a course like this, every birdie is kind of a gained opportunity. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's, there's no hole that any player is going to attack or the field's going to attack mm -hmm. and be a must get. Not going to work there for Blomroos. Missy Gannon though, might be setting a very tough bar for the rest of the field. She's, Oh boy. Six through eight clean. Oh boy. 100% C1, 100% C2. Oh boy. Oh boy. You know, I watched her practice round that she played with Madison and Erica, and I, I was like, oh boy. Like these turnovers, yeah. they, they, they fit the turnovers that she likes to mm -hmm. throw. Flat to turn, little bit of Annie to full turn. And Haley off left side chains. Yeah, the, the last thing you want to do on a birdie bid is to give yourself just enough distance to not feel comfortable with the return mm -hmm. putt, especially when you've already had a slow start. Speaking of which, oh. the same story for Cat. That is too close to miss in the major. You, you, you got to dig deep and make those count. Yeah, I feel like you get one. You're allowed one for the entire tournament, but then you have to snap back. Yep. Birdie look for Kristen after a really solid shot. Oh, yeah, that's nothing. She's never missing those. We've seen her miss, like, a couple, but... Yeah, that's that's just... The basket might as well be an ocean from that distance for Kristen. And this is kind of what she does especially this season, she's just kind of chipped along. She hasn't been like, oh, she's gotten 12 birdies in a row. She'll go birdie, yeah. couple pars, mm -hmm. couple birdies, par, par, birdie, birdie. And then at the end of the day, she has a, a clean seven under. That was a solid, confident looking delivery from Hannah. Interested to see how these scores shake up. Yeah, do you think do you think double digits is coming into play? I think I I mean, if Missy doesn't get to double digits, I'd be surprised because the front nine from I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Front nine seems a little tougher than the back. Yeah, let me go through uh, stats here and let's let's sort them by averages. <laughs> Did you see this kick? Look at this kick. No, I was looking at. She hyzered off to the left side, <laughs> kicked something, and flew all the way over there. Oh my gosh! Who was that? That was Valerie. Okay, Valerie Montahano. The greatest spray of the century to just absolute gem landing zone. Perfect. And that... Oh, look yeah. at that shot yeah. there. That is a 
Base Job Park. Base Job Park. Base Job Park City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking at the holes and on the hardest nine holes. Yeah. Actually, she got it. Yeah, that 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 was the putt to get Missy to six under. So the hardest holes are actually the back nine. I thought that it was a it's a little bit it's a tough stretch to start off with, but the easier holes are kind of in that middle mm -hmm. section and the late part of the back nine. So kind of where Missy is right now, that's where a lot of the birdies are coming, but 13, 15, 18, and 11 and 16 have yet to give a single birdie to the field. That is pretty incredible. So five holes that still have not yet been birdied. Hole nine hasn't been birdied. Hole 12 hasn't been birdied. So that's what these players have to look forward to on the back nine. What's the birdie count on seven? Kristen just threw a gorgeous tee shot there, left side. We have two birdies, Rebecca Cox who was our former leader. Actually, is she still our co-leader? Currently, Still yeah. our co-leader. Yep. She birdied it, and so did Katrina Allen. And it goes right side. It's one of the reasons I love hole seven. Yeah. Now Evelina, solid nice. putt there. Woo. Saves the par. Two down right now is okay. It's going to keep her in the hunt. Sure. Really looking for Kat to get back into it. The forehands have come out a little fluttery. Mm -hmm. Got to get a little bit more spin rate on that to keep that thing from. Did you see wobbling. that? I, I saw something. <laughs> that is a crisp release. Did you say crisply? Crispy released. Uh, no, I mean, that was just. That is what you're looking for right there. Gap hit with authority. Now she has just a straight shot to the, the basket. And one of the open holes, the tee shot, really good tee shot gets you down here in the open. Haven't seen Cy all season. Wondering if she's going to be on a full tour this year. Well, Still fluttery, but that one was right through the gap. Good shot there for Cat. Yeah, that's kind of pretty common for her forehand. It, it doesn't come out with that clean spin like Haley's does, but she, she kind of uses willpower to get the disc down the fairway with the forehand. Okay. Jonathan, we got any questions coming in? You been scoping? <laughs> Just antsy to... Oh, here we go, Germ. You got one, Brian? Yep. I see some pros without a caddy. Mm. Do you think that a caddy can hurt someone's game, and what makes a good caddy? Oh, certainly. A, a caddy can be awful if you don't have Horrible. a connection with them. And if, <laughs> hey, man, like, what are you going to throw next? Like, uh, you just hold the bag. You know, like, unless you're my friend, like, you know, if it's just some random person asking questions or, you know, somebody who doesn't quite understand the flow of how the communication works mm -hmm. with... You know, I feel like an interesting thing that you see at different levels of play with intermediate to advanced to pro, you see the different conversational settings that occur in these different environments and it changes. The, the And and not just pro, but like your local pro scene versus the disc golf pro. Oh, tour. for sure. It's a different setting for sure. And if somebody brings in that very, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gregarious style of conversation that exists on the lower levels, mm -hmm. but it doesn't quite translate unless you have personal relationships with the players on the card to bring in that like, hey, good run. You know, we don't really say good run mm -hmm. when someone misses a 30 foot putt, you know, because exactly. we're kind of like that. What was good about it? The part where it missed, you know, are you trying to get yeah. in my head? And it's not, you know, so, you know, caddies can kind of interject if they get a little bit overconfident. Um, but most of these players are smart enough to not have a caddy that's going to potentially risk getting in your head or the player's heads. Exactly. So, but I mean, a bad caddy can be the worst. I, I, all I'm saying is, that, you know, if you're a local to a course that's that's getting a, a, a pro tour event, and you message a player online to caddy for them, and they say no, I would not take that personally at all because sure. they they don't know you, so they don't know how chatty you are. They don't know how quiet you are. Right. Um, 
they don't know if you're going to show up on time. <laughs> so I, I, I think players, especially Kristen, you look at Kristen, so only sometimes does Silver carry the bag. Um, but he's the only one she'll let carry the bag for her. I, I, I think about this one time in, a, in at the IDGC at the Steady Ed course. I was about to tee off. I was on a card that Terry Miller was going to brought or film. And um, right before I teed off, this guy asked me if, if he could caddy. And I was like, yeah, dude, of course. Like, I, I'm not one to be too per, uh, overly particular about that kind of thing. As Miss, Miss Kristen just barely misses the line. Oh, I think she was just genuinely sad that it didn't advance the fairway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, no, that was so exciting. Oh. <laughs> um, anyways, so back to the story. The, the guy asked me if he could caddy, and I was like, yeah, of course, man. You got it. And I was joking with him, and I said, there's three rules to a caddy. And this is something that I've heard from golfers. A nice shot from Cat. Uh, and it's the, the three ups. Show up, keep up, and shut up. Right, and it's just a joke. It's not really intended to be like, "Hey, don't talk to me," because uh -huh. that's clearly not my style of uh, interaction with my caddies. But uh, <laughs> Terry just kept the part in where I look at my caddy and I said, "Show up, keep up, shut up." <laughs> and <laughs> there was no context delivered. <laughs> I mean, I got roasted. In oh, the comments. that's funny. So, gotta love the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it is great having zero context and hearing an audio clip that makes me look like an absolute animal <laughs> danger to society <laughs> someone's doing something for free for you I know. you shut up I know. <laughs> it, and we just laughed the whole time i didn't even know that there was any sort of tension built until uh oh that's this is a cool moment this is a really cool moment that fella that you see right there is a huge Haley king supporter he lives up in the massachusetts area and he's come all the way down here to support wow. her in her efforts at this event and i think Haley maybe didn't even know he was going to be here and so that moment right there capturing on camera that's a really cool thing and before we glance over that that landing zone on nine is perfect it doesn't look like it's the perfect line uh -huh. but pushing that far is what you want to do natalie pushing up here on six or 17 that's, that's not going to work trying a, to go flat that's an island green out of bounds and unlike the drop zone last week at hole 10 the island or the the drop zone on 17 is 50 60 feet maybe even mm -hmm. 70 feet so there's no guarantee pars it is a birdie or bogey style hole and i appreciate that mm -hmm. i did not like how close the drop zone on hole 10 was last week yes i understand that for sure and here we go into the juniper forest we go doesn't have much but the flip roller does advance About maybe 60, 70 feet. I'll have a long look for par. I got a question for you, Jerm. Another fan question coming in. Right. We have been seeing some significant injuries lately with these really good dual sided players. Oh. What do you think Green could be the biggest right contributing right factor? Is it the overuse of the big forehand? I'm curious what your thoughts are on that one. I think it's different for everybody. We see players like. Um, Calvin, Kristen, with the elbow injuries. Yes, yeah, Simon and, had an injury for a while that prevented him from throwing forehands. And it was kind of on the UCL side, so that's uh -huh. forehand related. That's the kind of stuff that pitchers get the Tommy John surgery on. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't think it's always with the forehands. You hear some players say that backhand is the one that hurt them the most. So I, I think it's just overuse in general. Yeah. And the fact that most players can't afford to play 12 tournaments a year, they have to play... 20 to 30 tournaments a year, sometimes right, more. Right. So how do you even train and work out for that? I mean, I, I think eventually disc golf is going to get to a place where the players just know that they have to be in just phenomenal condition. Totally. Um, and, and we're just, in good shape now, but there's another level to it for sure. It's the natural order of sports. Um, you know, the, the best athletes over time have just become the cream of the crop. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's no different in disc golf than it is for basketball or baseball or football, whatever kind of football you like to watch. Mm -hmm. Sayananda in for the par, I believe. Um, I, I think about Holland Hanley. She says she's found a really good, and that's a great that putt from Haley. Perfect. Holland said that she's found a really good method for her workouts because she used to be a power lifter. So she still lifts pretty heavy mid season. Okay. 
And she says that her big lifts happen on Sunday night after the tournament. So okay. as, as unappealing as that sounds, she's trying to find a way to fit these in while she's still having to throw a bunch of shots. Right, right. Um, yeah, I, so for me, I, I was having a lot of back issues um, when I was carrying a bag over my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And um, Levi Buckingham, the maker of the pound bag, um, was the first person to introduce me to the quad cart that I use now. And I, I wasn't really sure what he was doing. I'm like, don't you want me to carry the backpack? Like, you're a backpack guy. And he's like, dude, this product shows your shows the bag front and form. You know, it's like, no, carry, use this thing. You're going to love it at the Beaver State Fling. Mm -hmm. And I did. And that was the first time I ever used a cart. And I tell you, man, since I started using a cart after that event, I have had, knock on wood, like almost zero back issues. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that the, the backpack itself was causing my back pain. And I'm not necessarily saying that it was, but my correlation is not carrying a bag, putting it down, lifting up, putting it down, you know, 52 times a, a round cured something for me. For sure. And so I think that all players have different issues that they have to address. For me, it was my back. Um, I've never had a forehand issue. Even though I'm a forehand predominant player, the way that I developed a forehand protected my arm from injury. Mm -hmm. um, more finesse related and less choppy in that, you know, exactly. that lumberjack style where you're hitting really hard. Um, so, you know, I mean... I think it's just overuse in general. And again, like a lack of, of um, really, really intense training. Um, but I don't think the players are doing anything wrong now, but I mm -hmm. think there's a lot more that could be done. But that is going to be a double bogey, I believe, for Natalie Ryan. Looks like she was unable to get up and down from the yes! drop zone. <laughs> Alan Scoggins for par from 70 feet. Fly it in their own. <laughs> awesome. Imagine playing against her in a putting league. Just what a nightmare. Uh, no thanks. Look. Hiya! Yeah! Perfection. I've seen her in putting leagues before, and I, <laughs> I have no interest in taking that action. Oh, she's having a good time here at Sprinkle Valley. Did you know, Germ, that Walnut Creek, the same creek running through Harvey Pennock, runs straight to Sprinkle Valley, and that's the creek the players are playing around, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump away. That's so cool. I had no idea. Yeah, we are actually, these two courses are probably within 15 minutes of yeah. one another. Austin, Texas, such a cool place. I mean, the food scene just being here for the last week and a half has just been awesome. So, I mean, and and anyone down here in the Austin area or that's been through Austin before knows that the food, the music scene is just awesome. But the disc golf scene has really picked up as well. And I got to say, the redesign of the Harvey Pennock course, actually, I've heard that it's called, it's pronounced Penick. Harvey Penick. It's actually properly pronounced Harvey Penick, which, and I'm not even kidding. Jonathan's shaking his head. That is actually how it's supposed to be said. Like a pina colada. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, like a pina colada. Yeah. Uh, that, th these courses are such a fantastic addition to a place that already had so many cool leagues and fun courses. So, And, and if you're watching this and you are an Austin local... Tell me and Jerem where we can get some food. Where's the oh, food spot? I got spots, bro. I got spots. Oh, well, never mind then. <laughs> I mean, you could definitely send in some suggestions, but I just, uh, you got to have the right people. That's one of the cool things about being on tour. You get to meet. Mm -hmm. Is that another? Yeah, she went seven for nine, Jerem. Come on. Shape up. She went perfect drive off the tee on nine, pushed the tree line through the same backhand turnover I was talking about. Oh bada God. boo, bada bing. Is that the? First birdie on whole nine? That's the first birdie on whole nine, I believe. Yeah, and that was about as textbook as you could make it. Oh, Kelly Foster also got the birdie. Oh, shout out to Kelly. Um, K. Foss. Dang. Oh, you know what? I, I have to apologize. I don't know what these stats are telling me. <laughs> That's not a good start. Well, this is ridiculous because I'm seeing... It's not showing me any green on hole 13, but two, bir two people have birdied hole 13. On 13. No birdies on 15. Several. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. The, these. The, the, I'm still getting used to the whole PDJ live thing. So. Jerm, let's fly through a hole that we can see and we can understand. Hole number eight. What do you think? 
Uh, well, it's par three. What is it? 300 feet or so. Um, it's one of the ones you got to get. I feel like on this course, it's it's uh, on the easier side for sure. Um, it does have a slightly over par average, but it. That being said, it's the fifth easiest hole, mm -hmm. and so I mean that just right there tells you how difficult this course is. Oh boy, this is tough. Anytime you gotta. Oh, what a sh. Oh, did she hit the? That's okay. totally fine. Honestly, that's great. She advanced forward. She hit the gap. Anytime you have to split out to your left side and throw over your throwing plant leg. And you got a big tree right there mm -hmm. next to your plant leg. Yeah, the cool thing about when you're in the woods for a back end is you can do the patent pending. But there is no forehand equivalent of turning your hips so you get natural hip rotation with the yeah. forehand. So those are always such tricky shots. You ever thought about learning a lefty forehand germ so you never have to throw a patent pending again? Um, no? No. Okay, well. I have I've only been challenged to throw lefty forehand while playing Ripped Revenge. <laughs> you ever play that card game? I have played that card yeah. game. Now it's Disc Dice. I haven't seen Ripped Revenge for a while. I actually got to play with the, the, the creator of Ripped Revenge. Uh, he's from North Carolina, and... Uh, he really knew how to play that game. <laughs> Who would have thought that? That's so. That's so nice, Germ. I uh, he he baited me in. I threw a great turnover drive, parked the hole, and he said, "Do you like that drive?" And I was like, "Yeah, I think that shot was awesome." He's like, "Okay, cool." And he plays the switch lives with another player card, and then just throws it right in the rough. And I was like, "Oh, that's why you asked." Got it. <laughs> so, a dastardly devil. It was a dastardly devil move. Fun games though. How often do you get involved with league stuff? Not as much lately. Mm. Not as much lately. I, I feel like what's that? What's the phrase? Like when your hobby becomes your job, you have to find a new hobby. I think for me, sometimes mm. I'm around people. You know, just like you, you, you're you're around people all the time. You're around the big energy of the tournaments all the time. Mm -hmm. In my off time, I either like playing by myself or like I, I I almost would rather sometimes go to a field and throw MTAs to myself with a with a whammo forty mold or something. Lately, that's kind of been what I'm Connect doing. with Frisbee Love. But in Charlotte, I think, I think I'm going to get more involved this winter. I think I'm going to play a couple more tournaments, uh, which I never thought I would say again. Yeah. But I, I'm starting to get the bug just at least in the local level. And then Charlotte's got some putting leagues. We got some putting I leagues. I got to come out there. We got some putting leagues. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't really make an appearance last year at the putting league. I might have made zero putts if I went. <laughs> I need to practice. Putting league, I love getting involved with that. But, yeah, we... Um, We've got a good one down there in Charlotte for sure. Shout out to. Oh, give me it. Oh. <clears throat> Shout out to Cheney and Brandon Reed. Brandon Reed gave me his AVR putters when I forgot my putters at Putting League one week. And then my putts just went in for like three weeks straight <laughs> using his <laughs> borrowed putters because uh, I kept borrowing them after the first week's success. And now I putt with AVRs because of that. So shout out to Brandon Shout Reed. out Brandon Reed. Yeah, dude. Um,. You want to bet a dollar on this? Do you think she's going to make it? <laughs> or we get into that? A, pre uh, a pretend dollar, of course. Cat merch? Ah, too late. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be on film betting against anybody. Ah. So that's not a. That's not a habit I'm gonna get too comfortable. It's a companion <laughs> stream. <laughs> <laughs> we can gamble. Come on. Yeah, maybe we can. Hey, you know what? You're on next time. You challenge me. We'll see. It's pretend money. <laughs> um. No, I, I, I guess I asked because there's so many, there's a lot of weeklies going on this week, um, just like one day C tiers. And I had the opportunity to play yesterday. And it just, those little events, those little fun side events, just remind me why I decided to take disc exactly. golf from the tournament level to the regional tournament level to the next stage, the next stage, the next thing. You know, you're on tour for, you know, 15 years. You just blend. Actually, question for you. I asked Paige Pierce the same question. Have those 15 years gone by fast or did at some points, did they feel like it was just a never ending summer? For a long time, it was, it, it was slow. And I felt like I was the new player on tour for so long. And, um, well, maybe it was going by fast. Maybe that's what mm. it meant. It was like, it was ripping by so fast. And I felt like I was riding this wave of energy of being like, this new person on tour and then i like look back and i'm like man i feel like the only thing that i know as an adult is disc golf and the mm -hmm. professional scene of disc golf 
And now I'm like, man, it's like, and it's been a lifetime. Mm -hmm. At this point, I feel like it's been like quite literally an entire life. You're lifetime. a sophomore in high school of your disc golf career. Yeah, this year is. 15 years No, I'm in. a senior, man. I like, I started in 2006, and this is my 18th year. May will make 18 years of playing disc golf. Um, so it has been a long journey. I'm going to bet three bags of popcorn on this one, Germ. This is money. I'll take that bet. <clears throat> I like buttered, homestyle buttered, if you don't mind. I'll get him popping. Missy. You always do. <laughs> on, on 10. There's the flip. Is she on fire or what? Sit. I would call that fire. Yeah. That would be for six straight birdies. That was more Heiser release than she normally likes to put on the disc. That was a that might be a new disc in her bag. But she's gonna go eight down through ten. Well, let's not call that one in yet. I think she's close enough to assume she has a chance. She has a good chance at it. Just like that has a good chance of going in for three under for Valerie. That keeps her in the mix. Actually, that puts her currently in solo third place. See it again. It feels like that range, 40 feet, is a range players would rather be at than like a step inside the circle. Mm. Especially the, the short step putters, hot putters. Not me. Not me, folks. Is that Jesse Linz? Uh, it's Jordan Linz. That's uh, Jordan Linz. Sorry. Jordan Linz. Jesse Linz is a fictional character. God dang it. Did I just do it? I called Kevin <laughs> Kiefer Kyle Kiefer, and then I played with him <laughs> in the second round last week, and he we just kept referring to him as Kyle the whole time, and it was embarrassing. I got to be better at that. Well, but doesn't Jordan Linz have a sister that's on? Morgan. Morgan. Okay. It's not Jordan and Jesse. It's Jordan and Morgan. Nice alliteration, though, if it was. Mm -hmm. All right. Magalina. Yeah, that is gonna get a good skip. Yeah, I got the good skip. So I do have that one. We can call. It I do have a perks perks pick bet against Nate Perkins that the okay. longest throw in would be over 215 feet this weekend. Do you think uh, someone's gonna ace? I I called yes. He called no. You're you're thinking that there's gonna be an ace this an way. ace or a throw in for Eagle on this course. There's eight par threes on this track. I mean, the ace at a major is pretty special. But four rounds, 100 players, yeah, eight I mean, par threes. Well, now, does this span across all divisions is the question. No, no. It's, it's got to be FPO. Who we're covering. Yeah. Okay, all right. So Because I think for the entirety of the event, we will see certainly longer than 215. Okay. But in FPO, I think that you're, I think 215 is a good mark to set. A little scared. Nate is whomping me in the perks picks. <laughs> I love that bet. <laughs> These are just at the edge of good. I think perhaps Haley has outdriven it too but, much, but she might have some sort of back to the basket type stance where she might mm -hmm. be able to get an angle on that second. Yeah, I think uh, Hannah's perfect. I think she'll be able to throw a standstill. Oh, Cat is not having a good day right now. She looks that, rattled. That was so close, though. I I liked the pace out of her hand seemed right. It just pulled maybe a foot or two to the right. It's got to push forward as it's hyzer, and you can't hyzer mm -hmm. too too quickly. Oh, yeah. And that right there is exactly oh. what you want. What do you think about the mulch out here? I mean, I, it's beautiful, and it protects the mud, but as far as the ground play and the... I'm going to call it slight inconsistencies that it might provide. Yeah, I have to agree. I, I, again, what, what's the optimal surface for when a course gets really wet and muddy? Like, what do you lay down? Do you, it's a wood I mean, chips, you, mulch. If you don't have grass, then yeah, what's next best? I mean, I guess, I guess mulch. I guess mulch. Or rubber pellets. Oh, we love rubber pellets. <laughs> like a playground. And we got Jonathan just chomping at the bit here to ask another question. I can see the twinkle in his eye. He is looking primed and ready to... Well, we got one here, uh, Germ, actually. Got one loaded up in the chamber as oh, Missy... Yeah. All right, we got Jonathan oh, he's coming got in. One. Coming no, in with a hot one. you me on the spot. I'm trying to make sure this thing doesn't <laughs> catch fire. <laughs> Thank you all for bearing with us. We, we're loving the comments and seeing how everyone 
uh, is enjoying this and just kind oh, of. Oh, are the, they saying that? The different vibe. No, I made it all up. Uh, <laughs> oh, the, no. The different vibe that, um, <laughs> that this companion stream is. So thank you very much. And I just want to ask uh, why are you two so good at this? Why, why are we so good at this? Jeez, that's yeah. a good question. Because when I was in Put the booth, I was freaking out. And then Brian, <laughs> I did my magic trick. Oh, no. And Brian took over. Missy missed her putt. And she did miss her putt. No. You know, Jonathan, I want to tell you. Every week for the past few years, there are people out there on the internet that listen to me and Germ talk about Frisbee, and they, they, their skin crawls. And we hear it sometimes. Yep. We hear about it sometimes. Yep. And we've become desensitized to what could happen if we say something stupid on air. No doubt. So now we go on and intentionally say stupid things yep. because we want to say Lean them. into it. So I don't know. I think it's just like over time, the nerves go away just like sports, but you still get excited when it's countdown to air. You know, you know, you know what I think of? I think of a, a marathon runner, a Kenyan marathon runner whose heart, I'm serious, whose heart rate is actually slower when they're running than when they are just living their normal life. That's real? That is true. Yeah, like marathon runners, their heart rate is more at a resting pace when they're running. And, and that's you? I mean, at this point with commentary, like being behind the mic for so many hours, like this is just yeah. such this is second nature. So I think that's, uh, I, I appreciate the compliment. But I mean, there's still so much to learn, and I actually, my nice shot. As I consider this as a, a future career choice for me, and you know, as I get older and older, and my ability to kick butt on the course gets lesser and lesser, um, and the players get younger and younger and better and better and all that, uh, you know, I think commentary might be the thing for me in the future, and I might want to get professional training on mm -hmm. how to like actually do this well because you know, there's a lot of people who thank nate for showing up and keeping yuli and i on track and all that and it's like all right man but i i kind of take this pretty serious mm -hmm. even if i'm not always refined and polished like we're working our best at it yeah i think again it depends on what role you take too on the broadcast like if you go play by play you have to be super polished with the transitions you have to always have like a witty right. line the color the color person is more you're supposed to be the prepared one with like all the little stats and all the little fun facts and um, you know, when Perkins told me this morning that we shared the Walnut Creek with Harvey Penick Colada. Um, <laughs> Look at this shot. Oh, that was so... We can clap so, on this yeah. podcast, right? Yeah, we can clap. That was sick. That was a... I cannot believe she ended up forcing the forehand through there with... That was such the such a narrow well, window. She's not going to step out with the knee problem. She's not going to step uh, out and throw the yeah, patent I'm pending. glad we're showing this again. This but, is an inside-out break forehand in, on the ultimate field. And we're seeing a much more attackable angle for the shot wow. than what Haley actually had. Imagine being another five or six feet. What she can actually see on that line is nothing. That was a 10 out of 10. There's a little grin. She's like, yep, that was pretty nasty. And skipping up over the, the layers there up to the green. I mean, ooh, full approach here from Kristen. Feels like it's not that far away. And this, so this is the perfect landing zone, and you still have some trees to miss on this left side. Oh, nice shot. And she does it terrifically. What do you think about these logs blocking the slide? Is that kind of a... I like it. Yeah, me too. I, I like it because, I, you know, it, you have a choice. Do you play the ground play and the intangibles of maybe not skipping, or do you go for the air shot with a nose up to try to put the brakes on? I mean, I, I like the concept of it. Also, it takes away the forehand roller from danger so that's you, true you want to have a nice air shot into the screen i think Paige pierce and henna are the two best patent pending or reverse pivot or whatever throwers in the sure. division they're so good oh that wasn't it that is somehow still it yeah still ha still going forward but also this is live right you know this isn't like post-produced where yuli like says like oh he's such a good putter and he misses and then we can't like actually say it was a commentator jinx because it already happened you just actively jinxed henna by saying that in her stance it builds character in my opinion all right i think she feels the vibrations from miles away and says you know what i gotta be better next time <laughs> all good fair enough Okay, oh, Holland Hanley. Tough finish. A very tough finish. Double bogey on 13 and bogey bogey on 17, 18. A one under round. She had things going in the right direction on the front nine, but that is a story that has been told many times today with this course. All right, Mr. Colling, you ready? Yeah. Another it. question. All right. How much do players change the lineup of discs in their bag, moving between tournaments and different styles of golf? 
Do you try to bag a disc for every shot and avoid changing or adapt for the course? Um, I can't speak for everyone. Uh, the question was related to how much do players. I can speak um, only from my own experience. Um, and again, this is not tended to be a bag boy shout out festival. But one of the things I really do love about having the cart is that, you know, with with my bag setup, I have basically my generic setup from really as understable as I need for most situations and as overstable as I need for most situations. Mm -hmm. And then everything in between with putters, mids, drivers, high left make for cat. Um, and so I feel like I'm covered for almost every course unless we get to a very technical track or maybe a course that has more water or elevation. And then you want to start bringing in these tertiary molds. Mm -hmm. And that's what that bag in my cart provides. It provides an extra six disc slot for me to bring these auxiliary discs mm -hmm. that allow me to kind of customize the, the challenge of the course and the discs that I bring with me. So my bag pretty much stays the same. Okay. Except for those six or seven auxiliary discs, which sometimes I go into the actual meat and potatoes. At Discraft, we've always been committed. Always but for the most part, I don't. So I know that players like Paul mm -hmm. will keep changing discs constantly. I remember way back in the day when he played for Innova, hearing that he put a star gazelle in his bag and being so excited that he's like constantly putting new things in the bag. Oh, and I love that. I know for him, he cares more about the shape he wants to throw. He's very mm -hmm. specific about what he wants and he doesn't care about what disc does it. Mm -hmm. But then there's some players like Ricky who will literally take discs out of his bag. Yeah, like at the Pro Tour Championship. Yeah, and, and he'll only put them back in his bag for certain tournaments. Nicholas Antila did that at, uh, at USDGC. His distance okay. drivers were in the st same stage of wear I love that as commitment. when he got second place. That is that is awesome. So I, I think it really varies across the board, and I think we don't talk enough about how unique the equipment is in our sport. That's a great question, and again, another one of these podcast questions. Maybe we'll have to form one of these one day, but for now, oh. I'm going to kick it over to Jonathan, who is coming in hot with another question. Oh, God. Yeah, and before I get into it, I just want to let people know sometimes they're commenting when I have you guys full screen. Um, that's just because there's a commercial break on the the mainstream. So we're just actually kind of giving you a little ad-free experience. So just you're not missing uh, out on anything. We'll get go. you back as soon as, as soon as ad breaks over. Um, we can read ads if you guys want us to read ads. <laughs> yeah, do you guys want more ads? <laughs> yeah, that's in the live, let us know. If you yeah. want us to read ads, we Outback will do that. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Jonathan asked the question. Sorry, okay. Um, <laughs> who is you guys, each of your favorite non-disc golf sports commentator? Mm. Al Michaels. I'd say Al Michaels for me. Um, I think it's a voice thing, and he has a certain um, presence on the microphone that just is very relaxed. He can match the energy of a situation. Um, obviously, he goes across all sports incredibly well. Um, and the other one would be the um, – and I, 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 I wish I knew his name off the top of my head, but the uh, English Premier League – uh, football commentator because he's just so poetic. Soccer like, has so many good commentators. In the moment of some beautiful thing happening, they can match the, they can create a, po a poem mm -hmm. in commentary and somehow do it seamlessly with the action. I mean, that just is next level. And soccer sets up for it too because mm. when a goal gets scored, you see the energy just slowly ramp up. And I think that's the most exciting part about soccer is everyone watches the goal form from the backfield. And so the commentators can kind of ride the energy too. I think for me, I, I have two color guys that I feel like I really love. One of them is my favorite right now is JJ Redick in basketball oh, because he's a, he's a sure. relevant player. He had a lot of success and he just loves basketball so much. And it, it comes out in the way he talks and there's so many talking heads and people that just try to get a, a rise out of people and they try to get a reaction or they try to generate clicks. And he always goes in there and just says, shut up. That's yeah. not how basketball's played right now. Right. I, I was right in it right. playing against LeBron at yeah. his peak. Uh, so, which is awesome because him and LeBron just yeah, started they, a podcast, they, they which podcast. was phenomenal by the way. But JJ right now is my top broadcaster that I like to listen to. Um, Sneaking in some licorice. <laughs> I actually was looking at that licorice. Thank you so much. But we're not <laughs> doing an ad read because we are not getting paid by these guys. <laughs> and then um, McEnroe in tennis. Oh, really? He's another one of those color guys that just okay. thinks really analytically about the game. And some of the best players in any sport aren't that analytical. 
and it's it's actually to a a strength, but someone like McEnroe who can at least bring you into the situation of like, oh, his second serve's coming out at 107. He should probably get it down to 103 and then give me a non-tennis player an actual reason for it is super cool. So I, I feel like I learn more about tennis watching when he's behind the Are mic. you a Tony Romo guy? I don't watch football. Okay, so Tony, Tony Romo kind of does that in the football realm where he's kind of like the J.J. Redick where he has that in-depth analysis and he'll, he will call a play before it even occurs. And he, then he'll say what the defense will do to try to counter that play. And I like, I like watching his broadcast because of that. But it's a good question. I mean, I'm definitely influenced by, mm-hmm. by so many other sports commentators. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. And it kept going. There was no second kick there. That just went deep into the right side. And we are on a whole, whole, 10. whole 10 now. They've gone through Austin Beer Works. The transition mm-hmm. from 9 to 10 is through the parking lot. You see the kegs all there on the left side, right in the background. It's just a really cool patio area where all the fans and players can hang out afterwards. Kind of going steep. Oh! oh! <laughs> nice. There's yeah. almost your 215. I'm, I'm going to get it, and I'm going to just <laughs> smirk because it's such a gamble. I mean, it's going to happen. Who, who, who better a player? to knock down an ace on a shot like this than Hannah. She just throws darts. I just can't believe how steep of a hyzer she threw with and throwing it from, from that kind of inside-out angle as well, not even a push hyzer. And obviously that was a, a lucky deflection, but I, but I mean in general, like when she has a straight shot at a pin, she is so hyper-accurate with mm-hmm. her release point. And the way that she brings the disc back in such an aggressive <laughs> manner and then really gets her hips fully committed to the throw, mm-hmm. she is able to do things with that throw that you just don't see other FPA players doing. I was noticing when you watch her line up a standstill, you watch her kind of do her practice swings, she has crazy like spine mobility. It reminds me of Eric McCabe, like so oh. flexible with how far the shoulders can rotate. You, do you think of Will Schuchert when you think of that? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Will Schuchert had, like, the most exaggerated reach back, and he was just, I mean, in his prime, you just never quite saw a disc whoop out of a hand the way it came out of Will Schuchert's hand. And it seemed a little bit of trouble. Not exactly. Not terrible. Yeah, not terrible. Manageable for the scramble, but not what she was looking for. A little tap in there for Sarah Hokum. She's one under par. Not too shabby. Tied for sixth place. Yeah. Oh, oh come boy. on, Evelina. You are such a highly committed player. I love looking at a gap God. that has a bunch of little twigs in it, and you have to say, okay, that's not fl- that's a flimsy <laughs> branch. That's a flimsy <laughs> branch. I'm going to throw straight through these. You say you love that. That... that part of the game brings me the most anxiety <laughs> are you a catchy or are you a deflecty or are you a nothing sometimes you got to talk to him yeah you got to ask him questions for sure oh this is not fun this might be one of those catchy deflecty situations yeah this is deep right side and you can tell the rough is it's a newish course mm-hmm. uh very new course and I don't care how much effort you put into the design, your deep rough is going to feel fresh and frustrating. I'm going to take a uh, I'm going to take a little licorice break. Generic licorice, by the way. <laughs> Unbelievably good. So good. <laughs> we can do that. This is not this is not commentary. This is just it's like it, but it's different. It's commentary. Yeah, it's definitely commentary. I they, they said, this is, think of this more like commenting on the action, not doing commentary. And I'm like, I don't know if I have that switch. I mean, we're doing This is my switch. This is my, yeah, you're seeing the switch as much as I can switch. This is my cold plunge. Yeah, this is to avoid going back to even par. Good effort, just never quite high enough. So you can call it a slow start if you want, especially with the back nine being as tough as it is proving to be for the field. 
Missy right now through 10 holes is seven under. Kristen at even. Not gonna fall. Haley stays at plus one, which is really not that terrible. Let's say every person in the field is bringing their A game. Mm -hmm. Who is your favorite style of player to bring their best? That's that's a great question. So I would say when Kristen's on fire, it's pretty insane. Oh, we get to see Eliezer unleash. Just Yaka Heiser. Stay in. She is a yawker. I cannot wait to see her on fire. I'm legally honestly. allowed to say that. <laughs> no, no, you are. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it doesn't have much of a meaning. <laughs> yep. But I, I, I love watching Ellie Ezra when she's sure. she's playing well. But I would say my list would be Paige when she's playing well because the aggression pays off. Kristen when she's playing well because it looks like she literally is a chess engine. Um, chess engine. And then. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, totally, totally, yeah. And totally. recently, Own, when she's on fire. It's some of the craziest disc uh -huh. golf that I've ever seen because it's resourceful, it's smart, and then she just hits like 460 footers in the round. And then she flies an airplane into the basket. I mean, <laughs> that's always fun to watch. Nice little birdie look here for Henna. Got a little question coming in from Jonathan. Yeah, Mr. John O'Neill says, Jerm, why don't you post to your YouTube channel anymore? I never really did. Um, <laughs> There's I, your answer. <laughs> Missy, four par, a good putt here on 11. I um, I, I didn't really uh, ever spend time developing a YouTube channel. There was that time in the COVID era where people's YouTube channels were, people were spending time on it. And um, there's a lot of things that I want to do um, and I just don't have the time. Uh, I, I want to spend more time doing graphic design. It's a huge passion of mm -hmm. mine. You're um, good at it. Thank you. And I, I really enjoy it. And it, it brings me a lot of um, fulfillment in my life. Uh, but it, it's hard to when, when, if you understood our schedule, I think you'd really understand how impressive it is that Simon and Paul are able to contribute to the YouTube channel and all the people who are doing their vlogs mm -hmm. and whatever they're doing. If they're able to do that on tour, it hats is, off to you. That is that is you have at that point no free time, mm -hmm. you know. And I spend a little bit of free time that I do have either playing board games, going out with Jules, doing something, um, hanging out with the dogs, mm -hmm. and then like resting and getting ready to do the whole thing the next day. And mm -hmm. so, it having a YouTube channel would be entertaining. I would like to do it, but it, I could only do it if I had a, a, a clone. And like, and a sustainable model too. I think sometimes if you try to make your channel one specific thing, it's very difficult to keep making content. That's kind of why I haven't done one either. Yeah. Like it's it's tough. Finally it's tough to keep it up. <laughs> yeah. She's one over. Gun. She's gonna have her time. I she's gonna oh, figure it out. She's like she's it's gonna 17 be amazing. or she's still 16. She's I believe 16 years old. Yeah, I think yeah, because she turned 16 the day that she won the U.S. Or the world's distance mm -hmm. last year. So that was in the summer. So she is still like very much 16 years old. Germ, she threw 503 Ugh. on on a laser beam distance line. Was she the one that threw 400 feet in California in 1993? I think she was. I think she was. <laughs> something doesn't make, something doesn't add up. But yeah, she's going to, I think uh, a, a clear favorite if they ever hold a distance competition again for an official whiff diff. Oh, she needs to go for it. She will smack down Jennifer Allen's She has the speed. Distance record. She, I think she can throw over 70 right now. I think Tech Dis has tracked her. Okay. But I think she needs to still learn the distance angle, like the high flipping nose down shot. Um, kind of like what Henna just did. That's Whoa. the best shot that I've ever seen on oh that hole. Oh my god, that is so good. That is... Unreal. Hilariously good. Yeah, actually, why are we not laughing? That is insane. I'm thinking about too many things at once. That's why, that's why I'm not well, laughing. I got to give a shout out real quick to UNC for their first round win against Wagner in the NCAA tournament. That is as good as you can throw a uh, forehand. I got to give a shout out to Kristen Tatar for throwing that drive. God, that was good. Really good. Yeah, that is 
300, excuse me, 320 feet on the dime. All right, let's take a look at this turnover again. I just love how she can get it to bend the corner and then flatten and still check up all the way. Look at that reach back. Steve Heiser. And inside too. I mean, she doesn't necessarily need to take it that close to that initial guardian tree. So good. But that is 340 on on the dime. Was that a fairway or a mid that she threw? I think that was a, a understable fairway. Okay. Driver. That was a wild shot. It was really well executed and just a perfect ex a perfect display of why I think she might have the most potential for dominance in the sport. Yeah. Like, whoa! Yeah. Who was that? Silva Sarnen from way downtown on hole 16. I checked the scores at the wrong time. A nice casual walk. Well, you can take a look at it right here. <laughs> Let's just break down this entire situation. Eh, you know, nice little 70, 80 footer. Heck yeah. But instead of getting the disc, no she's up. so far away that she's, I'm going to get my bag. Oh, it's going to take a while. Casually walk up there. <laughs> yeah. Like, might need a snack. No rush. Speaking of snacks, do, do any snack sponsors want to chip in right now? Because I feel like this is a perfect time we'll for have... you to have a bag of love corn. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, love corn. We've reached out to you before and you have not responded to our requests. We'll put a bag of love corn on a string, drop it from the ceiling, and <laughs> bow right here, right just in the middle. Have one of those like gack moments in Nickelodeon where they just have a bucket that just dumps on our head and it's just like corn. Like, wah, wah, wah. we kind of look like we're humiliated, but it's actually we're covered. It's in actually very fun. Snacks. Yeah. And oh, Avelina on 12. Why does she throw the disc so good? Another good turnover that flattens out at the end. I mean, a look for birdie in this one is a a good result, regardless of how far past the basket it has gone. Let's see how the putt's feeling for uh, Sai. She has one of my favorite trajectories on the spin putt. Oh! Oh, look at that one creeping in over the rim. She can't believe it, but she loves it. A little squeaker. Yes, pat, pat, pat. That was for par. All right, so here you go. Missy just throwing another one of those beautiful Missy lines. Just flat, little bit of turn. Asking for it to turn. It's trying to Too maybe stable. a deflection. That's it's, okay. It's out there. Buckets. Another good hit from Valerie. And currently she is still in solo third place. One shot over Evelina who has a look to tie her for third place. Coming up, outside C1, I believe. A little bit long. Should just be a nice little hyzer on the outside here. Rebecca Cox's first round is coming in unofficially at 1026, so awesome starting round for her. Kristen electing to go the hyzer route. A lot of trees oh, yeah. in the way. Oh, yeah. But none in the way of that shot. All right, Jerm, here you go. I got another one for you. All right, bring it. You're a sneaker boy. Yeah. What okay. are your your what are your go to type of golf type of shoes for disc golf? Do you have different shoes for different courses and tee pads? Um, well, let's first take a look at this Natalie Ryan putt for birdie on hole eighteen, and in uh, that will finish her round at three under. Um, yeah, I a lot of birdies in there, man. A lot of double bogeys and bogeys three under. So that was an up and down round. Um, yeah, sneakers. Um, <laughs> I like I like trail runner trail runners like most players do. Um, I've been using the Nike Pegasus Trail Runner um, for the last three seasons, and um, I think they're fantastic. They they provide enough um, cushion and texture on the grip um, on the outsole that uh, it's not overly cleaty, but it's mm -hmm. enough grab that it usually works well with most of the teeing services that we have on tour. Um, they feel lightweight like sneakers, but they're also rugged and um, provide good stability underneath my big body frame. I see. So I, I need something that's, yeah, I, I don't think that I could work with any of those, um, like the vans that you see some players wearing and stuff like that. I'm, I'm a little bit more traditional in the, uh, the trail runner and hiker style. Uh, oh, boy. 
I think down. sometimes the vans are more for the flex of wearing vans and the aesthetic than it is the actual function of them. They're good. They're I good did. shoes. I forgot my disc golf shoes one time while wearing some vans, old school shoes. I played around in them and they were fine. They're fine. The older I would, you get, the more important it is the kind of shoes and the quality. Oh, the I mean, as wear. the as the quality goes down, the quantity of the style has to go up. Something has to balance out the scales. When do you move on to the Skechers? What, at what point do you have to go to the New Balance 608s? Gotta have a kid first. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And I have to also get past the point where I just truly don't care okay. about other people's thoughts and my own thoughts. Uh, and I don't really know if I, if I want to go there. I mean, I could see Nate finding a really comfortable pair of Skecher sandals and then unapologetically, non-sarcastically, unironically wearing them and even maybe like to us bragging like these are more comfortable than i ever thought they would be mm -hmm. and then secretly yuli and i are just like what is he doing my, my father has an entire bin back home of new balance 608s all with varying degrees of grass stain and i wish this was a joke but I there's at it. least 10 pairs in I there it. I and it's, it. I it's really do i I, I, ha I want to get a pair of nike monarchs just to wear like the day after the robot performance are she gonna make this jeez one? On Scoggins, you're ridiculous. A couple of just light skips. God. One fist pump, one if bow. If she doesn't make a 70-footer as a fan, I think you get to get your money back from the Disc what? Golf Pro Tour. Like these, these don't hold the, don't runs hold me to the basket are so long, she has to come up with choreography. Like, okay, well. <laughs> yeah, ah, like, oh. yes. Otherwise, you're going to get bored. You're just walking. I love it so much. It's so awesome. Um, but yeah, I want to wear Monarchs as a punishment for bad rounds. And Evelina drains that. She is now tied for third place with Valerie. Huge putt. Actually, Valerie uh, and her are no longer tied because Valerie is mm -hmm. out there doing her own thing. Putter not feeling good for Haley right now. You got another question, John? Oh, no. No, it, it's there's just people asking about every product they can see, so they're wanting to know what the disc is. Oh really? You gotta, oh, you got a couple seconds I, to to, to so plug this. So I am a I am truly like I'm a, like a little kid when it comes to this kind of stuff. I if I if I get a new disc or I get a new toy, like I'm like I like to hold it close by. But I just came out with these uh, new Lionheart stamps. And That's I've got, wild. I've got uh, four different stamps. This one has a little two tone mini stamp, which Innova has never done before. So that's a first of its kind. And like a little Halo Thunderbird over here. I just like to have them close by, just just to remind me that they're here, you know. Yeah, you sleep sleep uh, with Look a couple under your pillow. Uh, so yeah, th that's what I have over here. Um, I was actually more for show and tell with Brian than it was for you guys at home, but yeah, well, well you they asked. It, so. So they, they look nice. Know. Yeah, they're fun. Um, and that's a that's a sponsor, man. You can leave that ad on. That's Nakwa. <laughs> you know Brian. You know uh, you, you know Billy Rossini. The Nakwa guy? Yeah. Um, I know of him. I know he's a North Carolina guy. Mm -hmm. And I know his truck says Nakwa on the back of it. Are you familiar with the sport hydrofoiling? That's, is that similar to like wakeboarding? It, yeah, it, it's in the water. And it's an extreme sport where you're being pulled by a boat. Mm -hmm. um, but there's like a big blade that goes underneath yes. a foil. Yes. That goes a couple feet underneath the water. And then you can control like these insane ramps. Uh, but Billy Rossini is the world record holder for highest hydrofoil jump ever at like over 23 feet. And the day before he set that world record, that Guinness record, which is actually in the Guinness Book of Records 2006, a picture of him doing this trick, the day before he bailed on a 32 footer and got woken up on the boat with his friends like, you know, like, hey dude, like come back. But yeah, Billy Rossini is cool dude. Love you, good product guy. Wow. Yeah, he's like, the renaissance man so anyways what a story yeah he's a cool dude anyways jonathan buy those packs yeah knock things are a surprising amount of questions about the kind of watch you're wearing germ oh really like like you would be stunned how oh many people jeez. Want to know. i mean it's it's just a samsung uh smartwatch with the just a i think probably an amazon stretchy band it's nothing okay. cool it's now, uh, this now is like as know. close to a grandpa watch as there is and the the only thing that i think is cool about this is that i currently have my local time and tokyo's time because i want to know what time it is in tokyo for some reason mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> understandably so of course after going to japan last year i just want to keep tabs on tokyo man it's the coolest place i've ever been like we're gonna go back uh 
in May for a couple of weeks, and I'm really looking forward to it. I was signed up for the Japan Open the year that COVID happened. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That was and so I sad. didn't get to go. Yeah. Would love to go back or go for the first time. Real mm-hmm. quick, Not I want to let people know, and I'll let you guys kind of take the lead on this, but we've uh, people have been asking about putting game season oh. three. You want to get into that a little bit? Sure. How much do we tell them, Brian? Not too much. Okay. We are, we are leading a grassroots charge to bring this show back. As you know, Disc Golf Pro Tour acquired Jomez Pro last year. And with any acquisition, things change and priorities change and just the entire structure of, of Joe Mesh. And you, and you probably can attest to this too, but mm. some shows went away because, mm-hmm. you know, there were some people whose full-time job or close to their full-time job it was to make these things happen. And now we're kind of doing it all together. So we're bringing these, these shows back and this is just the beginning. So we're doing putting game. Go ahead. Well, I, I'm just, I was just going to give you props. I mean, like you essentially single-handedly are the reason why this is coming about. I mean, obviously the people commenting, you know, hey, where the heck are you? Every putting game? single video. I know. And, and I got to say, first off, uh, not that this was the question, uh, but what you did with the catch series, the idea, the execution of it all was just really fun to follow. Thank you, man. And, um, you know, I thought it was a disservice to what you were doing when people were commenting, where's the putting games? when the content of what you were doing was actually really, really good. But understandably so. So now we're going to have the big show back. Yep. And I, can I talk about like a little bit of change oh, in the I, format? I, yeah, please. Yeah. I'm just going to give a little idea of what me and Jerm want to do. We're trying to go more Mario Party and less Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. We're trying to do... Mm-hmm. We, we don't want the players to be stressing out when they, when they do these because at some point... The players were actually getting overly competitive and, and upset when right. they weren't putting great. Right. So we're we're bringing the game show element back, and we're, this is just the beginning. We have some really awesome spots lined up, um, but we're we're not going to let you in on that yet. Yeah, that that part will be a secret. But yeah, there 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 will be just to give you a little bit more, but not giving you too much. Um, there will be intermittent periods of the putting games where who whoever is maybe not winning the most <laughs> they might get the blue shell they yeah th- there's going to be ways of equalizing the field a bit and um it's going to be done in fun ways the players might be there might be some props involved we, we filmed one and we filmed it at a spot we were really excited about and i will say it went really well and the players had a fantastic time so germ I, i'm looking forward to Dude, just me too man th- just this being the beginning you know we're going to put out a, a season we're proud of and then if it does really well and y'all share this with your friends and family and we get the views that make us feel like it's worth it, we're going to do it again and we're going to blow it up even bigger. Yeah, that's, so. that's the goal. And thank you guys so much for letting us know how much you guys liked putting games. Um, I mean, we loved doing them. It was a big investment of time and energy. Uh, and and it was hard to justify last year doing mm-hmm. another one. But we heard you, and um, we're responding. And thankfully, it is coming back, baby. So that won't be out until the end of the season. So you yeah. got to be patient with that. But fortunately, in the meantime, we've got action like this. Well, before we jump to the action, I will have to say, I'm not going to share too much, but I'm looking for a pair of Jinko jeans. <laughs> And I need someone to to send what me a size pair. Waist? <laughs> I, I I vary from a thirty six to a thirty eight. I'm a nice wide set guy. <laughs> if you got a pair of forty two inch mammoths for me, send them my way. Hit me up. I need them. He has been looking for them, and I tell you, the online price right now for Jinko jeans is somewhere in the two to three hundred. I should have kept range. mine from third grade, Germ, <laughs> with the flame patch on the back, baby. I I saved up allowance for months to buy a pair of black. <laughs> Black Jinko jeans. And our younger audience might have no clue what we're talking about right here, but just look up JNCO. This is like the rage when Brian and I were in middle school and elementary school, where there are these oversized, the the baggiest jeans you've ever seen with these pockets that are just unbelievably large. A two liter of Mountain Dew could fit in both back pockets. I fit my seventh grade algebra math textbook in my back pocket brian i wore them to school one time i saved up for months i bought this pair i wore them to school one time and i felt so ridiculous wearing them that i never wore them again i was too embarrassed at least you can live to tell the tale that you did at one time and you know what speaking of jinko jeans incredible forehand approach there from chris Datar. <laughs> 
a great little turnover touch shot with the approach disc. What a dumb segue. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. I'm not Terry Miller. I, you know, I, I don't have those on speed dial. <laughs> I'm doing my best over here, Germ. But, uh, but really. Send in your Jinkos, people. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if you have a, a home course that's near a place where a Disc Golf Pro Tour event's going to be this year, and you want me and Germ and, and the Joe Mez crew to bring you know, some of the best putters in the world out there, let us know some interesting spots that you think we could go and, and, and rent a venue out for. Let me add to that. If there will be a Disc Golf Pro Tour event that is a three-round Disc Golf Pro Tour event, if your pro tour event that's local is a four round event, we're not going to be able to film the putting games that week. So if you have a pro tour nearby uh, within some reasonable amount, like let's say 30 to 45 minutes away, um, something where it's reasonable for our players to get to. Um, yeah. Let, let Brian, us know. Let us know because we are still sourcing the locations for those for the rest of the season. And let's get back to the action here, Brian. And a four birdie short and right. Similar spot from where we saw her fellow country person. Country Con con country woman. Country woman. Country woman. Evelina make that putt just a m few moments ago. <laughs> Jonathan, you got something for us? No, I was just going to say, so this is obviously out of our uh, Good typical day-to-day -day operations doing this gentleman's cast. We're stoked to be doing it, but I just want to give a little shout-out to the crew right now. We actually no have obtained the front nine cards for the post-produce coverage that will be coming out tomorrow morning with uh, Madison Walker, Eric Stinchholm, Two Hot Geese. Two so, Sexy Ducks. Yeah, just a little little behind the scenes there the, the show must go on with the normal uh, posters covered so you can still look forward to that um with two hot geese so it, did did we hear back from one of the members of that crew no we didn't okay. very busy very okay. busy very busy okay. they will be here later tonight though to record posters coming okay well, you're stuck with Thank me for a couple more holes germ yeah. i i'm gonna have to actually leave and go do more commentary for Tournament Central on the Disc Golf Network with Nate Perkins and then back here on Sunday. Yeah, well, it's certainly been awesome having having you be available this week. You know, when this concept was passed by us um, early, well, sometime last season when the idea for the initial um, Jomez cast, uh, you know, having somebody sit in the booth with us was a very important part of it. Yeah. And um, there we go. you being available has been really nice. What a shot, Brian. I always just love a good straddle, like, step-out shot. It's tough. That no matter how you spin it, it's tough. Low ceiling through a window. That was a really sick shot. Good skip action there for Sai. Yeah, well done. She's hanging on. And one another under. one. Is that a bad one? Hanging on to onto one. And another one. And oh, that was that's nice. Thank you. That's well done. Thank you. Following Haley King into the back nine. You know, I, I don't think I ever answered who my favorite player is to watch mm -hmm. when they're bringing their best. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm with you in a lot of ways with Paige Pierce because it's the fast and the yeah. furious. And it's incredible to see her when she's charging full steam and fully capable with her body, mind, and spirit, mm -hmm. and her intentions in the right place, and her execution is phenomenal, because she is just, she has that real leader quality to her, mm -hmm. where she can just dominate. But Haley King, yeah, her fluidity, her forehand-backhand combo, and how nonchalant her long putting stroke is, like she can make it rain. And when she is yeah. on it, she is so much fun to watch, but I think it's, the way that you talked about Kristen being a chess simulator is just, it's spot on. She just always has the answer. She just knows what to yeah. do and how to play within her game. She breaks it down in a way that it makes it seem vastly simpler than it is. Mm -hmm. I, with Haley, 
this is a cool she remind, 13 is sweet she reminds me of um like anthony barella where when you watch anthony when he's on fire you're like oh yeah this is the best player who has ever lived ever mm -hmm. this is great and, you know and i think Haley gets to that mode too where you're like oh wow how how does she ever lose and we realize that golf is a very complicated game i, I never really i still haven't got that way with gannon I get that way with Macbeth when he's playing well because oh, yeah. because when Gannon's putting, it seems it's so good, it's so effective, but it feels forced and uncomfortable. Yeah. Like when Macbeth is shredding, it's just it it is the simplest looking sport you've ever seen in your life. You it almost it simplifies the game so much. To teaching and learning, teaching and learning. It simplifies the game so much that it almost makes it an unviewable product, an unsellable product, because you're like. Where's the drama? This guy is too good at this. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we, we've been blessed to see some incredible talents in our sport. And uh, we, we just took a look at hole 13, a uh, hole that is actually close to that Walnut Creek that you're talking about. And one of the interesting features of the property here is that the closer you get to water, like most places mm -hmm. in the world, the bigger the trees get. And one of the neat things about the green on hole 13 is it has this huge burr oak that is just in comparison by all the other trees in the forest here at uh, Splinter Valley is just an absolute behemoth tree. And I love that they brought the basket near that tree. They, they call it Splinter Valley when you're having a bad round, but they call it Sprinkle Valley. Sprinkle, I said Splinter. No, but I mean, it was a nickname, well, I know. A, it's got a lot of... It's, it's a nickname. It's got a lot of mulch, and if you trip and fall, you're definitely... It's not going to be called Sprinkle Valley in that moment. It's not all puppies and rainbows out there, folks. It actually was called Sprinkle Valley because the original area was the Sprinkle Valley Farm. And uh, the, it eventually just kind of became an extension of Austin. So that's where the sprinkle comes from. Uh, and once again, thank you so much. If you've been watching this from the beginning, you know what's going on here. But if you tuned in recently, this is the pilot episode of the Jomez cast hosted by Jeremy Colling and Brian Earhart. Today, we've got round one live on YouTube on the Jomez Pro channel, as you know, as you're watching this. But the final round will only be available to watch on DGN Pro, and that will be March 24th. We will have the champion on this simultaneous broadcast. So obviously, if you want to tune into the broadcast, if you want to have a little hangout session with me and Brian, we'd love to have you here. Uh, we're answering questions, a little bit more of a, a relaxed environment, if you will. But, um, you know, obviously we got the concurrent streams here and you can always switch right back over to the traditional style commentary. And uh, yeah, let us know what you guys are thinking about the uh, the Jomez cast because we'd love to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts? I think it's fun. I mean, this is just, like I said, this is what we do. This is talking about disc golf is as natural as anything else, man. Just a reminder, if they're, if we're full screen, we're, we're kind of keeping you guys from having to watch extra ads. So this is just a little thing. We were, we're just reminding some the people, people tuning some in. people are asking us to show the throws just so you know, I know that sometimes it's hard to look at these two guys for an extended period of time, but that's why I put the glasses on. We'll get you back there as soon as we can. Again, if you have something you want me to read an ad for, just let me know. I, I love ad reads and uh, any product, really. Maybe right? that's what we should do. Like, yeah. If you have a product at home and you're a, a, a person who's running a business out of your home and you just figured, hey, maybe we can get an extra ad read in, send us some money and we'll, we'll read your ad. Or if there's a monologue you can type up in the comments section, I'll read the monologue. <laughs> I, it, Brian will do it for free. He just loves it. He, I like, love reading. really enjoys reading out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I used to teach preschool. Story time was my... Is that true? Yeah, it was my bread and butter. When did you do that? I taught for like a two-year span when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like in preschool? Like that? Like young Yeah, I wasn't younger? three. I, wa I was a grown adult <laughs> teaching the preschoolers. Yeah. That's yep. Excellent follow-up question, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was younger. I was just wondering. Yeah, how much over. younger? Yeah, yeah, you, you showed up if, on day one. You said, you know what? I got this. You think if preschool teacher, maybe it's a three-year-old that's teaching high school. Who knows? They could be really smart. Anyway, <laughs> I, I got to stop talking to him. <laughs> it just reminds me of an old uh, Mitch Hedberg joke where he's like, Hey, my roommate said this is a picture of me when I was younger. It's like, all pictures are of you of when you were younger. It's like, Here's a picture of me when I was older. Wait, hold on a second. Where did you get that camera? <laughs> this is Mitch Hedberg. He gets my funny bone. Oh, man. boy. Anyways, yeah, so that's what's going on today. And um, like we said, it's just round one, round four action. Uh, I'm sure Brian and I will be on the course checking Definitely. out the scene live. Uh, and if you are in the Austin area, I mean, this is something you want to come check out. 
because Austin Beer Works there on site with a fantastic brew um, and a fantastic area just to sit down and have some good food, mm-hmm. watch good, good disc golf. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is the first major of the 2024 season. And so far, we've been seeing some incredible action. Uh, Missy Gannon was seven under th- in the front nine alone. Currently, she has a one shot lead over Rebecca Cox, who had a 10 26 rated first round. Uh, how, how do you feel like the course has been playing so far? Pretty much ex- how I thought it would play out. Yeah. I mean, I thought that we would see several scores under par, but not many that would be over five under um yeah five under to to eight under kind of seemed like the top level of what i was expecting these women to do at least first round as they get more comfortable to course throughout the week i think that we might see a score closer to digits yeah i like that these landing zones are distanced appropriately for the fpo division to make them throw really adequate shapes um, with enough distance to be challenging but it's not like it's stretched out to the point where they can't score uh, I, I think it's scoring fantastic. This is a flippy driver that she likes to throw here. She's going to try to throw this a little bit higher, drag it off to the right. Still bogey free for the round. Some of the hardest holes are coming up. This seems like a, a incredibly early release. Yeah. And hole 13 is one of the hardest, if not the hardest hole on the course. And she was in a perfect position too. That was that was the spot to strike from. Yeah, this is the third most difficult hole on the course with 18 coming in yeah. as the hardest. Arm was just a bit late on that one. And Evelina, left side. That, <gasps> oh, that is gonna be out of bounds uh, on the right side. A bit overturned. That's heartbreaking. That birdie that we saw Natalie Ryan achieve on 18 to finish her round was the only birdie of the round really? so far on hole 18. Yeah. And that was a really close putt as well. So, you know, you, you watch the flyover, you look at the caddy book, you look at the distances. Yeah. That looks like a hole that could be eagled potentially, but it's apparently playing a lot more challenging. Well, the interesting thing is, it is the number one fairway hit hole on the course. And yet it is coming in as a 1.38 over par. So after that tee shot, things get dicey. Yeah, you see players trying to cut the corner, go across. You see players try to play safe, but then it gives them kind of an awkward hyzer up to the basket. Sayananda, still one under. Brian, the longest throwing we've had so far is 164 <sighs> feet. Not quite. I, I need 215. I need 215. at the 215 range. Oh, oh sit, sit no down. the second That's... skip over the wall OB that hurts that was such a beautiful throw I don't think I, I think she is confused on whether it's out of bounds or not but I'm pretty sure we saw the yeah, thing skip it, OB from our perspective that's certainly what it looked like it did but those railroad ties are just high enough to keep a disc that's coming into the green slow enough in bounds but if it's still got some action Ooh, this is a techie little forehand here for Missy. Like a little fern gully tree right in front of her. Oh, nice shot. Uh, well done. Bogey free intact. That was a sick lean out forehand hitting a tight window that I think required a little bit of, I'm not going to say, I don't, don't want to say luck at all, but a fortunate uh, pathfinding as it got through <laughs> those last trees on the way up to the basket. Jeremy, circle. I got another fan question for okay. you. This is from... Uh, iz 22 who is the best catch cam on tour oh there's no question there's no question we got that one locked up with josh eisengrammer the man is a technician on the catch cam Fowler with good width there skipping in low and i just want to give a quick shout out to my mom who is watching right now hi mom my mom is not watching. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in and watching the broadcast. Perfect shot there from Kristen. A little bit of a hyzer flip, pushed forward. Just another one of those subtle bends in the fairway. Stock hyzer might put you a little short. You kind of have to throw something with a little bit of flip. Yeah, you really want to get to about 320 feet to have the perfect shot as a dog legs down to the right side that is a little early 
but gets through now, so far. Now, the, the angle is good, but she's going to be uh, quite a ways away from the green. Yeah. But still, the, the initial gap hitting and getting around the corner is going to set her up for at least an opportunity at a good second shot. And Haley still only two over for the day, even though she's never really quite had things going her way. Cat also just having a really rough day out here. That was a smooth release, a little bit tight on the inside and kicking back to the fairway. Par is attainable. But just missing that gap by, a, you know, half a foot or so mm -hmm. is the difference between being in the perfect landing zone and playing for par. Own Scoggins from 55 feet. We'll go ahead and call this one in. <laughs> Three bags of popcorn, Germ? Yeah, sure. Oh, all right, we're even. We are even. Uh, what do you think about I'm guessing you took the no. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure, whatever serves you. All right. All right, fourth shot here from Evelina after going out of bounds. Not going to happen. That would have train. been an insane par, though. I mean, yeah. on this hole where there have been a grand total of two birdies on the day. Size shot stayed in bounds. Just oh, it did stay in bounds. Oh, wow. Really confusing camera angle. That's great. Great yeah, news. Good, good for her. Yeah. Got it. Really good for her. Great par putt. Hole 15 only been birdied by two players, Natalie Ryan and Raven Klein. It's a long hole out the gap and then elevated basket. A lot to tackle on 15. Forehand for Haley looks fantastic. Yeah, she, I mean, that is, that is just as smooth. Who is throwing that shot farther? Holland, I think, has the best power forehand right best now. Best power forehand, okay. Yeah. Right. Holland's, Holland's shot is geared for the power, whereas... Holland, Hall, sorry, excuse me. Haley. Haley's shot is geared for the, the smooth, let the disc do the work mm -hmm. style, and that that suits the woods a bit better. Yeah, that was very well done. Just want a quick shout-out to Ian Anderson, Central Coast Disc Golf, in the chat. Oh, let's go, Ian. Miss you, man. I haven't seen Ian in a long time. Yeah, uh, he was he was one of our inspirations. My we got to get him in here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, honestly, like he with, with, what, with what he was doing. Uh, Central was Coast Disc Golf was around before Jomas. Absolutely, and like uh, he was the one that got us basically your job because we weren't doing commentary, and he's like, man, you really got to do commentary. And sure. Like, That's uh, not really our thing. Like I don't know like how to do that. And then over time, he just you know. Kept encouraging us, and, and over the years we've been able to. Valerie, on, so. huge shout out to you. Yeah, seriously. I mean, so many people paved the way for disc golf production as we know it today. Um, you know, if we want to go back, way back, we give a shout out to another guy from Monroe or Matthews, North Carolina, Mr. Billy Crump, who is most certainly not watching this broadcast today. But you know, he he is one of the very first people that any of us who've been around for a long time ever listened talk about disc golf he had his own billyisms that's butt on a hot roll the, the torturance and the furtherance and yeah the feeding right now the evelina I mean, uh, excuse me not evelina henna with the the clever feeding something that billy might say oh that was going right to the pin in the last tree and knocked it down but Terry Miller, I mean, another pioneer. Uh, yeah, that's the still going. The Terry Miller does as much to this day as he did from the beginning. He yeah. has not changed his, his pace at all. It's, it's incredible. He doesn't get quite enough credit for what he has done for no. disc golf production and media and commentary and all those things. I believe, what's the minimum to be in the Hall of Fame? You have to be 45? He's going to get my vote. The moment he's 45, he's getting my vote. He'll be first ballot for a lot of reasons. I hope he is. Do you get a vote? I'm going to get one. Uh, actually, no. If there's a team that, that votes, I'm not going to oh, get one. Oh, Kristen just sits down before the OB line. She'll have that putt for birdie. That is a large flag, Brian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me that. 
Evelina on 14. Nice high. Why are these Finnish females such phenomenal frisbee flingers? <laughs> well, Dr. Seuss, I'll tell you. I think when they picked up disc golf, they picked up disc golf as a sport right away. It wasn't just a, a lifestyle, a way of living. It wasn't part of the counterculture of frisbee. They had people show them how to throw, and they mm. played it for competition. And I think that's what I think really that's what it comes down to. And you have all those guys from the states that started going overseas to play tournaments out there and yep. doing clinics. And sounds like that information's just been passed down from generation to generation. And now some of their disc golf instruction is top tier in the entire world. Yeah, I remember. I've only been to Finland the one time when we first went in 2017, but their playgrounds all had baskets, permanent baskets. Yeah, and oh, the on. culture is so like different. The same, like we have basketball goals. Like, My my first trip over to Finland was 2011, and when I went over there, um, the I got dropped off. I was a no-name pro in the sport at that point as far as like the grand scale of what disc golf was. And um, I, you know, I literally got off the airport. Someone picked me up, dropped me off at the disc golf course at Tallinn Frisbee Golf Puisto, and uh, three or four kids that were just tall enough to keep their bags from dragging on the ground walked up to me and said, Mr. Colling, Mr. Colling, can we have an autograph? And I was like, blown away. Where are your parents? First off, kids, <laughs> you know, but that was the culture. You can leave your kids in a public park in Finland without having to worry about someone snatching them up. Evelina for birdie. Uh, but yeah, you, and then you see disc golf in the front windows in sporting goods stores. And then you see advertisements on the radio and on billboards for disc golf tournaments and players and the recognition of the sport in um, specifically Scandinavia and the Baltic states is uh, it's it's a, amazing. It's really amazing. And now you have Evelina Salonen over here winning tournaments and dropping in putts on the weak side. And shout out to Niklas Antala, the first Finnish male to win on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. What a clutch moment oh. that was. That was something else, man. What a moment in sports. I can't imagine that anyone watching this has not seen the way that that tournament unfolded but if you have not for some reason go back just and watch do it last week's coverage because it is an awesome finish so Kristen no pun on the word finish <laughs> Kristen on, in, is not safe at least. just outside circle one it looks like A little bit short armed on that one. Not gonna fall. Kristen only sits at one under par. She's, She's five not. off the pace. Isn't that six off the pace? Uh hot score right now. Uh Missy did get to seven, you're right. But in the clubhouse she is five back. Yeah. Yeah, Missy's still gotta hang on to that seven. I think I think Kristen's just in, the, in fine position right now. She's hanging in the mix. There it is. Love to see it. Nice speed there. Yeah, again, Kristen knows that these four-round tournaments are more about conserving your energy and conserving your competitive stamina, as I, I've heard referred to in other sports. Um, and I think she's just going to kind of chip away at this course and put together a solid number the first day and then try to ramp up each day. She's trying to shoot better and better each round that she comes out. And that's how you close out these majors. As a fan, when I was watching like the USDGC back in 2007, 2006, 2007, 2000, um, the early, or late DVD. 2000s. Yeah, well, in person even. Oh, North Carolina boy, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'd always see the first round hot score be, you know, 61, 60. And then throughout the week, they ended up getting those scores down to 55. And mm -hmm. I didn't understand, like, why don't they just shoot better the first round? <laughs> And it always confused me how the course could get so much more attackable throughout the week. And, you know, obviously I didn't take into account the conditions that they might have on the course or learning a course or relearning a course and all those things that come into play. But it is certainly a big factor in a four round event. This oh, yeah. is a three round event and certainly a factor in the major championships. Missy Gannon taking her first bogey of the day with a very jittery putt. And back down to six she goes. And, yeah, I mean, it seems like she maybe woke up a little bit, so to speak, and realized how good she was shooting. And Oh, she had a chance on hole 10 yeah. to, to have seven consecutive birdies. Sayananda, 
Let's go. Another good putt. The spinner is looking solid right now. And Val, Val is right now at six under par. This is an opportunity. Oh boy, solo a new leader. leader. A new leader. That, that occurred quickly. This is what I want to see, Germ. I want to see multiple players bringing their A game all week. I want to see it come down to the wire. I want to see players like Kristen uh, own. I want to see them get challenged for four straight rounds to to have them dig deep and bring us something spectacular. Oh, well, was that putt? Yeah, they're not showing 17. That was hole 17. So yeah, that was a putt to get to seven under. Wow. Take a look at that leaderboard. Chantel Budinski is the one name that I'm not quite familiar with. Do you know anything about Chantel? Oh, Chantel from Canada won the Rochester Flying Disc Open last year on the Disc Golf Pro Tour Silver event series. Uh, it, it was a wonderful finish. She shot some phenomenal golf, some of her best thousand rated rounds. Um, yeah, she's just an all around class act, and you can follow her on YouTube at Miss Frisbee's. So you know a lot about her. That's awesome. Good for you. You know, Jeremy, that was a softball, man. I that do is, have to cover both divisions. No, you do a great job. That's why you're the perfect person for this. Just stop. Just stop right there. That's why you're the perfect person. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, thanks. Fair. Fair play. Fair play. There it is from Haley. Yee. Okay. Was that through the inside edge of that gap? I'm not quite sure, but either way, it is putting for birdie now. It looked good. Jake Mon stoically standing in the background. I believe caddying for cat merch. No. No. Oh boy. Oh, that is a huge deflection and a, a secondary kick back to the edge of the fairway. That will help her case in getting the par. Timing just looks a little bit off right now. Up to Paige Pierce. Yeah, Paige, oh, Paige Pierce. Boy. Off left side, still recovering from a devastating ankle injury last year in Norway. Uh, happy to see her back out here and competing, but just hasn't quite found the rhythm yet. And it, I mean, an awful round one for her. But I mean, this That's is tough. just this is the progress. This is the steps that it takes to get back into it. And you don't you don't learn how to get back into tournament action by sitting yeah. at home. You know, you got to put yourself out there and that's what she's doing. And well, what you heard from Des Redding in the intro to this event, this entire broadcast, she said, if you're not willing to be vulnerable and put yourself out there, you're never going to experience the success that you deep down want to feel. And I think something beautiful. like Paige is doing right now, it's probably really hard. She has a lot of people on her all the time. She's yeah. always had people chirping at her her entire career saying, you can't do this. You can't sell discs. You can't do that. And she's always proven people wrong mm. after all these years. She's been on tour almost as long as you have. Yeah. Met her in 2010 at the Minnesota Majestic. And um, I remember the first time we saw her throw the disc, it was, it was kind of had that factor of like when we saw Eliezra throw for the first time, yeah. where it's like the, hold on a second, how is she doing that? None of the other girls are doing that. You know, at that time, uh, the, the, the form was a lot more like, slow and dainty and then Paige brought in this aggressive fierce mm -hmm. rip through a shot and it was like I mean it caught your eye and um you know her what she's brought to the sport is Tatar now goes to two under what she has brought to the FPO side of the sport is immeasurable um a first ballot hall of fame and overlooked in many ways oh and yeah yeah and 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 overly criticized and scrutinized for her decisions like yeah. she is out there living her best life mm -hmm. and right now she's struggling with disc golf but that doesn't mean that she's struggling with life yeah she's just not producing scores that she would like to produce it will make the comeback victory feel so good to remember back these these rounds and think about tiger i i was just thinking was it 2019 Everyone was on their phones watching him come down the fairway of 18 at the Masters while we we're supposed to be putting, warming up for our tee times. Oh, it's the greatest. It, I, it, it was, was so cool. The, he, his, his impact in, in golf is obviously 
immeasurable. Yeah. But what Paige has done for for women in the sport is, I mean, nearly, sizable. Yeah, I mean, as far as a ratio goes, like she is. <laughs> I mean, just so much fun. Pretty good. Now let's jump ahead. Outside Heiser line taken by Evelina. There's three gaps here. You can go middle. Missy has been practicing this middle this middle shot. Okay. I'm interested to see what she goes for. Yeah, this is a legitimate three uh three option hole. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. commit to the middle that low release. Still fine cuz the the eight Heiser's left. It it fades left at the end. Um I think the best line here, Germ is left side. We see the left gap getting passed right now. If you go yeah. forehand, you'll get to a nice, comfortable, conservative spot. But the most aggressive play is on the left side backhand. And you go turnover, risking the roll bounce uh -huh. left. And that puts you to a really nice spot. But yeah, this, this hyzer is tough because it's tight. It's an interesting angle. You can hyzer too far left and not have an angle up to the basket. It's a very specific landing zone to be able to get a disc into position and then get around the corner to the basket. And that is why I believe this hole has still yet to be birdied for the day. I I don't think, well, no, we have two birdies. Excuse me, I said this earlier. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just two players on the day and that right there tells you enough. A 4.88 average, it, it is incredibly demanding I mean, Missy still has her work. She's got to get to the landing zone that she yeah. was intending off the tee and even gets a little bit more with a skip around the corner. But from there, she's still got her work cut out for her definitely. to save the bar. Yeah, I think you got to definitely get some distance off the tee to avoid some of those random trees. And, Jerm, this is on-site. Mm -hmm. This facility is on-site. This splits the, 9 and 10. The backyard has a patio with a roof over it. There's places to hang out. And then here is where Sprinkle Valley begins. Literally every disc golfer's dream is to have oh something like gosh. this to have a have a a course i mean for me you know we've talked a lot about it with other disc golfers like having a course on your property is a dream in itself but to have a brewery on top of that and then to have a pro shop and everything right there uh yeah these guys have got it set up in a really cool way here at austin beer works but um yeah, i mean you can get a good look at the, the the foliage i mean it is a dense track they just happen to have an incredible field that they may be able to expand to other options in the future with shows and whatnot, if that's a, a, a choice that they decide to go with. But for the time being, they've got a sweet 18 hole course and they've even got a nine hole putting course uh, that is currently awesome. not up, but they have it lined like the Tiki course out there uh, in Spotsylvania, Virginia, if you've ever been to the Blockhouse Open. Oh yeah. One of the one of the spots that you really got to check out as a disc golfer if you're ever in Virginia. And, you know, and if you come out here to Austin for a disc golf trip, Take take the forty five minute drive down to San San Marcos and play a Flying Armadillo. Oh, sweet so course! All the incredible. pros seem to go through there and, and throw their ace runs on the Tiki style par or a par two course. Did you see the clip of Ezra Robinson acing that double ace? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That is one of the coolest things. Texas has got disc golf, folks. It's a very specific style, but it seems like Dallas and Austin kind of branch away from that bramble texas mesquite tree style that you mm -hmm. kind of get maybe a little bit overly familiar with if you play a lot of texas golf but there's some good grass fairway stuff here you know when i think about what waco presents with the brazos east course that is a special place and um we're kind of tapping into that a little bit here yeah in austin i agree Taking a look at the leaderboard, Valerie Mondujano, seven under par through 17. And again, a par, a par five to finish, apparently a really challenging par five yes. based on the scoring spread, but opportunities to take birdie. I like the way this course is scoring. A few under is going to put you towards the top, and I think there's opportunity to go way lower than that. Jonathan looks like he's got a question he's just oh, been boy. itching to ask, and so we'll send this one over to Jonathan. It was, we were laughing at your expense, kind of. Somebody said Fair they enough. needed to apologize to you because a few years ago, what did he say? Was years ago? In San Francisco, and he said, not all vegetarian options are healthier, and you agreed, and they got you in trouble with Jules, apparently. 
I don't know why that was funny, but you asked. So. <laughs> okay. Well, I thought you, you Rowan, then you I also put your hand up and you said, me, me, me next. I've got a question. Me, me, me next. Oh, so you apologized on behalf of somebody. <laughs> That's nice. It's always nice to have someone to apologize for you. I, no, I, I appreciate the apology. I have no recollection of the event, but I appreciate it. It didn't offend me. I promise you that. I've not slept on that one or less slept on that I'm all sleep. I slept on that one. <laughs> Valerie with an opportunity here going into 18. So she's out of bounds right now. If you're not familiar with Sprinkle oh. Valley, you are teeing off from out of bounds. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yes, she has not teed off yet, but currently she is out of bounds and she, she needs to reach the island. Exactly. You reach gotcha. the island and then it makes a C, a big, thick C. And you can kind of see the shape now. Yeah, there is OB left on the hill. You can kind of see those flags come into That's play. I, I was surprised to see that the flags weren't tighter to that road. Mm -hmm. But seeing as how hard this hole is playing, I think they've made the right decision by keeping yeah. it as wide as they have it. Yeah, interested to hear how the players think 18 is playing and why it's playing so challenging. So much green space to land in here. It's that second and third shot that's been getting players very wide and trusted there by side. That's good. That's really good. She can cut the corner now and play straight forward through the trees up to the green. Own through the woods, going forehand roller, getting some stuff in the way. Still hasn't quite gotten on track for what I think we were expecting her mm -hmm. to to demolish this course. Yeah. But she still has time. I mean, she's definitely not out of it by any means. Only eight shots back of the leader's pace at the current moment. Kristen going left side here no on 15. No. That is, that is brutal. She looks a little dejected. I guess hard to tell sometimes. But just de definitely not a uh, a focused first effort here from Kristen. She did say that she struggled with her energy levels last week. Oh, yeah. I'll take a break. <laughs> oh, did she really? Her energy levels. I mean, and she still put in uh, an over 1,000 rated performance. Correct? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you're going against a 1029 average. A historic performance put forth by Owen. I think it's the second time that a player has averaged over a thousand in FPO and still lost. And I believe Christian was on the receiving end of the victory when Missy did that last year at Worlds. Okay. And then there's the aggressive line from Haley. Is it low enough? That's ah, still too high. Popping the nose up. Notice that's the big miss today. That's it. That's going to be it. That's the good stuff. <laughs> That's got to feel good for Kat. Being able to smile through the adversity that she's gone through today is it's a good sign of where she's at mentally. I mean, that is a... It's just not quite been her day. <laughs> but to step up and just nail the hardest hole on the course, a tee shot, or the second hardest hole on the course, uh, yeah, 44 footer to save par. Just a slow back nine for Missy Gannon. Just a tail of two nines. You know, you'd love to see her just get a couple more birdies to finish. But a pretty solid 44 footer. Kristen to get back into position, finds an early tree corner. Bogey the likely score at this point on hole 15. Kristen also mentioned there's some upper back pain that she's been dealing with. She said it's not that big of a deal. She tries not to think about it. And I understand being a player of her caliber, I think she knows that the moment she says she's hurting, something is injured, everyone from all angles is going to be asking her about it. So I think it has to be okay.
for her to say that she's injured. Otherwise, if it was deeper, she might be a little bit more vague about it. But, Germ, as you chew on some wonderful <laughs> licorice, I I might have to uh, bid the adieu soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to get back there. Get back there to Sprinkle Valley and finish off the afternoon with Tournament Central with Nate Perkins. Make sure to catch that at the end of the broadcast. We have some exclusive interviews with players that don't get shown during the broadcast. Uh, me and Nate Perkins are going to be doing some different segments, some form reviews, all sorts of things in that show. So make sure to tune in before, between, and afterwards on the Disc Golf Network. Jeremy. Brian, you killed it, man. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate your expert analysis and your personality and your humor and your charm and just for being perfect, as you said it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> On that note, I'm out of here, folks. And we're going to do another one of those magic tricks where Brian magically turns into Jonathan Gilman. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian, for joining us today. And once again, if you are tuning in recently and having been given the lowdown, what we are doing today is the inaugural, the pilot, the debut of the Jomez cast, the very first live broadcast show here on the Jomez YouTube channel. That is for today's round only, though. The final round will be only available to be seen on DGN Pro, and that will be March 24th. We will crown a champion in a very similar format here with kind of a laid back conversation style where you guys get to interact with us sending in your best possible questions where you suck up to Jonathan J Gomez just a little bit to get his attention and maybe he'll ask the questions to Brian and I <laughs> all right well Brian is heading out the door and just like that Jonathan you're back in the booth how's back. it going on the technical end of everything um it's still going it, it hasn't crashed it hasn't oh, uh, done amazing. anything like people are seeming to really enjoy uh this this is brand new for us and i couldn't be happy with how it's gone so thank you all for being so supportive thank you all for just sticking along with us i think it's hanging around like two thousand people which is great no it's, kidding it's huge for oh i i it's huge for the fpo field this is, is what we this is what we want thought. um and so <laughs> thanks for tolerating Every, everything that we've put you through today is, is uh, yeah. thanks for being here, Jerm. Yeah, man, this is a this is a, just a cool opportunity for me um, as someone who wants to get into doing more live broadcasts with the Disc Golf Network, and I will be doing that uh, at the Dynamic Discs Open, and I'll be doing that again in Portland. This is a concept that we have been talking about for a while. Oh, Haley King getting hyper aggressive, trying to go over the top using that big, powerful, lengthy wingspan that she has generates enough to get back to the edge of the fairway but um the concept of the you know is initially thrown to me as the germ cast but then became the joe mess cast which i think is a better name anyways because germ silly sounding um <laughs> but doing this with the live broadcast on this channel is just it's honestly long time coming it's overdue one yeah, reason. absolutely. And so it took it took quite a few. There was quite a few moving parts for us to be able to pull this off. Um, huge shout out to Gary O in the booth. That's run that runs yeah, the DGN streams. Sure. He made this as painless as possible for us, so that we could come in and do this because we were well out of our wheelhouse. And uh, I, like I said, I couldn't be more thrilled with how this has gone. So, Cat Merch after that incredible drive has pulled her second shot off the fairway right side unfortunate not to be able to take advantage of that stellar effort off the tee missy now on to hole 16 out in the open oh, yeah this hole has been birdied only five times on the day by the field Third shot from Kristen. I said she might not be able to get the par, and I was wrong. An incredible third shot. I thought she was a little bit more stymied at the corner, but looks like she got through the initial uh, obstacles that looked like we're going to pose a problem on that third shot. And now she is inside bullseye for her four. And still, hole 18 has only yielded a single birdie on the day. Sayananda with a very aggressive line. 
Oh, that is the way to do it. That is dissecting the hole with two perfect shots thus far. And his third throw is just outside bullseye. Looks like she will be taking a par here on hole 15. Meanwhile, Evelina on her second shot on 16 has turned it over wildly and yeah, that Ooh. barely stays yeah. safe. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, and that was her second shot. Or maybe it was her third shot. I don't know if she went out of bounds off the tee or not, but either way, she has not gone out of bounds from that spot. So she will have a shot from probably 200 feet or so to the pin from there. Valerie having to go stand still from the bramble and just getting it up to the steps. It's not a play for the pin. As I mentioned earlier, that those that stair area in casual play is all out of bounds. They opened up a narrow tunnel down that little opening area to the green on 18 to all be in bounds. But if you come out here casually, don't expect that to be a safe landing zone. Haley King needs to get up and down here to save the mm. bogey, and she has only managed to get about 20 feet out of the thick. She's going to have probably 50 feet plus to try to save the bogey. And ground play a big factor here on these mulched greens. Once again, that's all provided by the McNabb brothers who do mulch in place. No. And maybe a bit quicker than their traditional routine. Sometimes the frustrations of the round mount up and you start to lose sight of how important each shot is at the end of an event. Not saying that she would make that more times than not from that range, but sometimes you don't even want to take time to deal with it when you're so frustrated. Absolutely. When you get this late in a round and you just think, I just want to hit reset. Yeah. And obviously that's not an option. So you just kind of think, well, how about we just get, move on. Your brain should always be set on damage control when mm -hmm. you're not doing as well as you'd like, but it's so hard to commit to actually doing that. I mean, the mental side of it is what separates the, the top level pros from, from everyone else. Uh, I don't know who Bushnelled that as eight feet, but that's a full <laughs> step outside the bullseye, which is 12 feet. So... <laughs> A little bit off in that one. To but a player like Kristen, it's all the same. Yeah. Well, I think the bullseye is technically, isn't it supposed to be 11 feet? Because then the next 11 is to 22 and then 22 mm -hmm. to 33. That's an interesting feature that they're adding in, especially when it's just incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, if you if you miss that putt, yeah, you go tell your friends I missed a seven footer. Yeah, exactly. Even if They're it's just... incorrect, I mean, yeah, it's full on eleven. <laughs> but feet. we're not seeing miss putts. So. No, Missy with her second throw after the great drive on the challenging par four hole sixteen, swinging in for Heiser, and she'll have a look outside the circle. Wow. It has been a while since Missy has taken a birdie since hole nine, I believe. Meanwhile, Sayananda up on 18 has an opportunity to be the second player in the field to achieve birdie. And she likes that. That is uh, directly online. There is a bit of a wall right in front of the basket, but as long as it didn't go too long, I think she's going to like her chances to be the second player today to birdie 18. Absolutely. Got any cues there, buddy? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, thankfully, we do have a lot of questions, but thankfully I'm seeing a lot of feedback coming in and, and people are enjoying the, the stream. So that's always 
really encouraging for us because this is our first attempt at it and we want to continue to get better at it so the first one you know having having the support from all of you is is huge so uh, just a reminder we will be on back on for the final round on dgn pro so just a reminder that there will be a switch over from joma's pro youtube channel to dgn pro round four this is a flyover on 16 a good idea of what you got to do here is try to stay out to the right side to give yourself an angle into the pin on this elevated basket it's just kind of hard to do because getting out to the right side is difficult with the gap you have to hit off the tee and also the distance required to break this hole down in two shots mm -hmm. um, even if you get down here with a look for the birdie it is difficult to make that putt especially on the elevated basket but Here's a good look at the window that you have to hit before getting out there to the right. But if there's one player who can do it with a big, long turnover, it is this player right here. Henna Bloomros's turnover wow. abilities with big speed drivers is nearly unmatched in the field. Wow. That, I believe, will be left with a low ceiling. That tree, I think, will still be in her way. But we'll see when she gets up to her lie what she's left with. at merch driven on Anheuser out to the right side not a ton of distance but that is good on the angle I mean mm -hmm. it's good enough to be a very serviceable play we'll see if she has enough to get to the pin from there Kristen in a very similar spot mm -hmm. I think you can see cat's disc on the left side of your screen from there so their position within 15 feet of one another. That is phenomenal. That is, oh. so I, the, where the flag, where the spotter is, is where you saw Henna's drive and Haley just blasted past that into a much better angle. I think this is Mondejano's yeah. lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good check. Good check. Okay, so it's going to be a standstill approach of some sort for Valerie, trying to figure out. I really don't mind either. I just don't want to cut you if you feel like you're ready. No, no, I'm right behind you. Good display of courtesy there as Valerie is trying to make sure that. She's going in the right order here and yeah. not wanting to play out a turn, of course. That used to be an automatic stroke penalty, John. Are you being for real? I am dead serious. That used to be an automatic stroke penalty. If you played out a turn, it wasn't even a courtesy. What issue. year was that? Like 1987, probably. I mean, it was like... Wow. I was going to say, <laughs> I, never never heard, I did, honestly never heard that. That's... Way before my time. That was shared to me by the by the elders of the Charlotte Disc Golf Club. So wow. If that's incorrect, it's on you, Sam Nicholson. <laughs> That's pretty intense. Yeah, I mean, that's it's just one of those stories. Is, it, is this legend or is this truth? I'm not sure. <laughs> I've... And oh, Lena's wow. second shot is... Is that... No, that's her third shot. That's right. She mm -hmm. had the wide second shot out to the corner that just remained safe, and then that third shot was pretty good. What would you say to the idea of that rule coming back in? The stroke penalty do you think oh, that a, would be really hard to enforce I, or do you think that would be i think that's i think it's very good that that rule changed yeah <laughs> just hey man can i go yeah yeah you can go ahead and go <laughs> but like, do, would you think that the uh that makes for more well-behaved players so when people get dude, frustrated no, they still I, have to <laughs> no i think what i think is it sets up an opportunity for people to be shady by letting someone throw in front of them and be like eh, stroke oh okay <laughs> yeah i see that i see that and that so Evelina's drive was indeed out of bounds. She threw her second or third shot to the corner, fourth shot to 25, 30 feet away, and then makes the puff for bogey. So a great bogey scramble for Evelina. Yeah. Meanwhile, oh my. Kristen's Atara's second shot Goodness. gets a little bit extra roll at the end. Incredible. But a good opportunity to be. Again, let me get my stats correct here. 
There have been five birdies on the day, so she could be the sixth player. Mm -hmm. We saw a huge putt made by Silva Saarinen earlier, right after Rebecca Cox made a big putt on that hole. Stacy Kiefer, Heidi Lana, and Eliezer oh. Mitling are the only other players to get the birdies today on fifth, on 16th. This is this might be contention for Brian's wager with Nate Perkins. If oh. someone gets in the right spot and a nice sure. high just stall and just you can just kind of try to crash the basket. This for par for Mondahano. She will go into the clubhouse as your leader right now at seven under. Missy needs the birdie seventeen if she wants to tie for the lead. 17 or 18. And a decent start on 17. She's going to have to make a good putt. She is leaning against the wall, and that is something they're going to need to check because that disc is nearly vertical. Yeah. I don't know if you can physically be out of bounds inside the railroad mm -hmm. tide area, but stranger things have happened. Yeah, yeah. So much power for Hannah being able to go high. Oh, just snuck back in curled around inbounds a downhill 37 footer coming for birdie a little bit wide on the release but look at this little ground play john doink wow for it to bounce out but then have enough spin yeah. to curl back in it's almost like the same result it could either just sat yeah, or yeah. bounce out and the, back. all is all is right in the end <laughs> I think this is the hole that Brian is hoping you someone think so? aces. Oh, yeah, because well, I, th there's there's a, a grouping of trees right off the tee box that force you to go hyzer forehand or backhand. Yeah. And after that huge drive from Haley, just a simple mid-range into the green, and she'll have that for birdie. This is what Cy has left to become the second player to birdie hole 18 and to get to four under. Oh, oh, and just short. Oh, you just got to root for that putt to go in. Her putting stroke it just seems so effortless. It's kind of, mm -hmm. it's so unique. But they just, well, for the most part, they're just falling today. Like, they're hitting. Mm -hmm. So, Owen going for the backhand hyzer here as opposed to the force flex. Is it going to skip over the road tide? It oh does. My and, and the into favorable the roll. green. Wow. So, so, that will get... Owen back to two over par for the day. Again, not the starting round she was looking for, but not out of it by any means on a four-round event. Oh, okay. Just going for the playing for the par. You know that that girl that slope. The green is pretty sloped, right? From that. Well, it, it, yeah. It's, first off, she's staying at higher ground from the mm -hmm. basket, and it's on an elevated yeah, surface. Quite a bit and drop off. with the nightmares that she's had with some of the three, four, and five putts on the green, the yeah. last thing that she, Henna wants to ever battle is an elevated basket. It has been one of her bugaboos, and I think she's made the right decision to place that under the basket. Oh, and actually, an update on Valerie's score. That was apparently a six. Oh. So we currently have a three-way tie for the lead as Kat Mertz joins the birdie club. Missy Gannon, Rebecca Cox, and Valerie all at six under par. And the closest player to them right now is a three-way tie for fourth place with Evelina, Sai, and Natalie Ryan. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'll sit down. Unable to mentally connect to her throw, it feels like, in some of these shots from Haley. She's a bit apathetic about the result. That's something you just don't see from this player right here. Kristen is very process oriented, goes through the routine, whether she's playing the best round of her life mm -hmm. or the worst she will always take her time and really make each one count. 
And it's the reason why that is typically the result you can count on from her. Exactly. Um, I know we were joking about ad reads earlier, but I think we have our first paid ad read oh, from the seriously? comments. Caitlin Bell. Hey, Germ. <laughs> friend of your mom here. Okay. I want to give my friend's shop no some kidding. recognition. Evolution Disc Golf in Saginaw, Michigan is a brilliant space owned by my friends Scotty and Brittany. Check it out. Thank you, Caitlin Bell, for the $10 super chat. And what are you uh, talking about? For real? The Friend of my mom. A disc golfer from... All right, cool. Hey, Caitlin Bell. How you doing? Thanks for watching. <laughs> So there you go. That's how you get it done, folks. I assure you, I do not see a dime from that $10 <laughs> super chat, but I appreciate it. And I'll be completely honest, YouTube <laughs> takes 30% of that anyway. So don't so, go too crazy on the super chats, folks, because you're just giving Google more money. <laughs> so next time, send 1333, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good putt for Missy over the rim and in. Oh, but seriously, thank you for that. Um, and that birdie now puts Missy on top at seven under, back where she was after nine holes. Oh. And Evelina unable to break that tie for fourth place. Chains out left side. But you gotta give her so much credit for, oh, yes. we're taking a look at Owens again. Did it hit it? Did it hit the tie? I don't think it hit it. I think no? it just hit right before it okay. skipped over. That would've been impressive to hit the top of it, but yeah. it probably would've gone a lot further too. And if you are a disc golf historian, Nate Sexton wishes a railroad tide would circle all the greens around the basket. <laughs> Sorry, Nate, for the random stray, but the 2017 Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship that Chris Dickerson ended up winning? 2018? Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, Missy Gannon. Back in the lead. Back in the lead at seven under par. Oh, and that's what I was going to get to. I was, I was talking about how Evelina's putt has <gasps> taken some serious turns in the right direction. And oh, absolutely. one of her biggest critiques in the past was that she wasn't getting it done in the greens. And now that she is, she is in contention. That was just a beautifully committed throw from Cat Merch. You're right. It's this hole. This is the hole that Brian's oh, going to get sure. on Nate Perkins. It's I, like I will be surprised if somebody doesn't at least hit metal at some point on this hole. Earlier in the broadcast, uh, Brian Earhart, who was in the booth, um, was it? Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> and hitting the wall, yeah. It's was... 215 feet is the bet, right? Between yes, him and Nate 250. Perkins. What is the longest throw in for the week, the week in the FPO field? Now, we have a lot of different fields here. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly how many players are playing, but I'm pretty... I think that this could be the largest FPO field in... History. Uh, we'll I have heard to do it was some 100 research. players. That's what Earhart said. 100 players, four rounds. Uh, there are 100 players in FPO. Yeah, that's uh, sorry. That's what oh, I and mean. we've got FP40, FP50, yeah. 55, 60, 65, 70. I mean, it goes all the way up, and then we get FA1, 40, 50. Yeah. So there are a ton of players here in Austin competing in this event. But the bet is 215 feet for the longest throw in in the FPO field. Yeah. Ooh, this is cool angle. And oh, hitting no. the wall in there. And you know, it, you just, you got a sense that that was going to happen with her body language on the release. She mm -hmm. just kind of knew that was a bit wider than she had intended. And you can yeah. see right here in your picture that they're uh, directly to the left and right of the basket. The wall is it's right. a little bit higher to prevent shots like yeah. Kristen's from skipping out, but it also prevents shots like Haley's from skipping in. From sneaking in from too low. It's You got to really commit to the height if you're going to go that wide. And that height is what lends it to being a great hole for <laughs> the longest throw in. And yeah. how cool would it be to see an ace coming down the stretch the final round of the championship? Oh my gosh. I mean, that's what you dream of. You heard it here first. <laughs> and we will be here on the final round on DGN Pro. Uh, joining you once again. Oh, here we go. Drop zone. There'll be some of those too, I bet. Some drop zone. Yeah, unfortunately, hit. that drop zone's not going to count for that 215. No. <laughs> Haley will drop another shot that will put her at five over for the round. It will be very interesting to see what happens with scores once and if, if and once, I should say. I don't know if that's the expression, but <laughs> if the wind does indeed come into play, this course will be drastically oh, there's affected. there's Conrad. Don't recognize that. Who's that? 
<laughs> Look at him, man. Look at him when he's not in competition mode. We don't get to see this very often. The dude, man. He is the dude. He is, he is. Taking her time, like you said, taking her time. It's no matter if it's ten feet, just poised. Circle's edge, or even further, it's poised, composed, as predictable as as anything in the sport. And she, now she's up in that three down spot. Yep, in the tie. in the mix. Even with the start she had, it's just it's amazing. Yeah, she. It's just kind of an, an a Calvin esque in a way, where like <laughs> you you see him not really execute for a while, and then all of a sudden he's. In the mix, and you're like, yeah. how are Where'd you? He come from? How are you clawing your it's way like back into this? It's like that rearview mirror meme, right? Where someone <laughs> yeah. just all of a sudden, Kristen in the mirror is larger than she appears. Yeah, <laughs> the and threat of Kristen is larger yeah. than you think. And and a great putt from Hannah as well. That is as long of a putt as we've seen Hannah make all day. Fist bumps a plenty. That birdie puts her at two under par. Ton of confidence going into hole 18 when you get that turnaround like that. If there is a player who can birdie hole 18, Hannah Bloomers is the player to do it yes that same for birdies that's so, what you love to see and to be honest Haley was just maybe a foot away from getting over that wall for a yeah. potential star frame but in the end three birdies on 17 and Haley King will tap in the bogey to get back or to, to go up to five over rather mm -hmm. But it's a very fair hole, and in the calm, it is one you expect to birdie. But yeah, that's what I was going to say. We are projected to see some higher okay. wind speeds on Sunday. That will make uh, that could change. Finish. It is spring in Texas. You never really quite know what you're going to get, but um, it is projected to be. Well, it definitely doesn't seem to be as, as ideal wind conditions as it is today. Yeah, I mean, it's very calm today, but also you had that kind of damp, dreary, mm -hmm. sprinkle uh, kind of affected some of the teeing surfaces, perhaps the fairways in a way, and always just kind of gets in your head about the grip. If that mist is in the air. Rebecca Cox, the leader in the clubhouse at six under par after the first. So we're going to come back in the booth. If you want to see the Rebecca Cox interview, you can go to the free stream today on the DGN YouTube channel. No need. She just said I played great. Yeah. <laughs> Made a really long putt on the whole 617 or whatever it was, 16. <laughs> no, I, obviously, definitely worth go watch Go watch that. Rebecca is such an awesome person, a great player. It's so cool to see her in the mix. Um, and what a what a great week it would be for her to get her a signature win. I mean, any win, Oh yeah. even if you're Kristen Tatar, even if you're Missy Gannon or any of these players who have won at this stage before, uh, if Sarah Hokum, who has won a couple of these USW DGCs, mm -hmm. If you win another one, it's like winning, you know, I mean, another NBA title is not going to hurt. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's whether like, it's your first or your fifth or whatever, you're just like, that's just another one that I can, when I might, it's like when my next signature disc comes out, how high is the number going to be? You know, even if you've been there before. Right, totally. So this is a huge week. It's certainly going to change in, in some way. Uh, the person's life, whoever ends up taking this title down and leaving as a major champion, the first major champion of the season. Uh, and and so far, we've seen exactly what I th I've predicted we'd see. Some good scores, a good mix of, of some a bunch of scores over par. People unable to, uh, ladies unable to navigate the fairways or make enough putts. Um, but then also some really hot scores with uh, two players at six under and Missy going into the 18th hole at seven under, shooting a fire emoji seven under on the front nine, just yeah. absolutely shredding the course. Yeah, and that like you, I know you alluded to, it, but going into the back nine, just how tough it really is because of the the stall that we saw. It's a you wall. Know, a lot of pars, one bogey, and then a birdie, and so she's still there, but it's still. It just shows how important it is to have that hot start because of totally. what you're going to face. Yeah, you can really ride a, a hot front nine into the back nine, kind of like Missy has. Uh, conversely, Rebecca Cox shot six under on the back nine, which is blowing the field away. Yeah. Uh, Valerie Mondahano had five birdies and a bogey in the back nine, but Rebecca Cox saying clean on the back nine is really the difference for her right now and the reason she is in the mix because she only was able to come out of the front nine at even par. Yeah. Um, so 
it tells you what I mean. There's, it really is a tale of two nines. But if you were able to somehow keep the 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 metal to the uh, the foot to the the pedal, me, pedal to the metal. <laughs> what am I trying to say? If you were able to do that for the full round and put together Missy's front nine and Rebecca's back nine, I mean, you might just win a major in the first round alone. Yeah. So we're gonna look back at Missy Gannon's Ooh. round as we were talking about the front I mean, nine. That's how. how she started her tournament. Yeah. The very first hole. No just, nerves, apparently. Cause... Thank you very much. <laughs> and this one was just pushing the right side the whole way. Look how close it got to the oh tree bark goodness. there. And in the end, in bullseye. the bullseye. But just, I mean, a literal width of a worm away from being... <laughs> a worm width. A worm width away one. from being, uh, you know, 45, 50 feet away. And Look then at that turnover. Just another near bullseye hit there for Missy. But also getting it done on the green. I mean, yeah. And then down to 17 with her latest. And a good look at the Texas State Flower, the Bluebell. The, the Blue Bonnet. The blue Bonnet. <laughs> nice try. That's I, an ice cream. I'm talking about the ice cream. They have a Blue Bonnet ice cream <laughs> from oh, Bluebell. Oh, okay, okay. That's exactly what I was yeah, talking Yeah, if about. you're familiar with Texas in the spring, the Blue Bonnets come up. They line the highways. It's, it's a beautiful sight. I, I was asked many times to take pictures of my wife around the blue bonnets last week <laughs> and we were scouting spots around yeah. the highway but yeah it, they are in force all around this area and they are it's absolutely it's beautiful. a welcome sight especially for someone like me who's from west texas where it's quite a bit drier so i love coming to austin this you don't time quite see the blue bonnets out there no we, far west. we we just see the grass the dry grass you see a lot of the, brush guards and yeah the brush guards and the deer and the <laughs> and the railroad ties and the <laughs> <laughs> oh man inside jokes i gotta say you the people in the chat are going super they must be hungry like me because all i'm seeing is comments about where to eat in austin so oh it's, it's, man uh, well i'll tell you last night thank you uh, for the ideas but it's not helping right now because we still have a little bit to go with you all I, I had a tommy want wingy last night a a wing spot that wonderful was highly recommended by um a, a, a person who's taste you have to respect here jeff gothard who mm -hmm. uh is a, a culinary expert here in the austin area uh, and a great disc golfer to boot and we went out and had some delicious wings last night but there are so many good spots i mean obviously texas is well known for their barbecue. i don't even think i, I feel like you have to live we're still Sorry in the interview our... break there and we'll get back to the final hole action here shortly but um there's You'd have to live here, I'd say, for, I, I might be underselling it, but six months to even, like, try to eat everywhere that's available oh. in this oh. Like, six months Minimum. is probably, like, you going every day. <laughs> I, we got a, I'm going to see if I can find, I got a message here of all the spots that we need to check out. Um, Enchiladas y Mas, Tataya Thai Cuisine, KG Barbecue, Micklethwaite, and Leroy and Lewis are apparently some of the yeah, spots. Yeah, and so there's a week of your life, you yeah, know, like yeah. that just goes to right. show how long it would take you to really, and it would cost you a lot too, because going to the food trucks and things especially is it's not the, the cheapest option. And but. it's not necessarily the, um, maybe the highest classy <laughs> answer, but you know, uh, Torchy's Taco, very famed oh, taco course. joint yeah. that started here in an Austin food truck. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite breakfast spots is Juan and Emilian. Have you ever been to Juan and Emilian? Oh, Million? I have. I have. Ran into uh, Jomez uh, film guy, Wing, and uh, yeah. Ryan Vandenberg out there randomly. Um, <laughs> but Juan and Emilian has a breakfast taco that actually was on the Man vs. Food Food Challenge. Wow. And the record number of tacos consumed by a human is nine. And if you see these tacos, <laughs> this is a tortilla and a mound of potatoes, yeah. bacon, cheese, and egg. And it's like, it's imp they give you four extra tortillas for one taco. <laughs> and it's legitimately four full tacos. And somebody ate nine of them. So, oh my goodness. There's some great spots I'm around I'm so here. hungry. Um, I, I think we're ready to get back to the action now. You guys leave some eighteen. You guys leave some comments. Are y'all cool with seeing us snack them down <laughs> while we're doing this broadcast? That's an old inside, yeah, joke. Oh yeah, we used to we used to really go hard with the with those jokes. <laughs> oh my gosh, the pop cart pop tart Ooh. skit. Yeah. Shout the out in the chat if you are old enough to remember <laughs> Nate and I making fun of the whole pop tart skit. That was. Give us some sort of indication in the comments. I want to say that was uh, 
Pittsburgh flying us open in the RV, the old RV. Old we RV used to days. sit in the RV little dinette area, which you know is not big enough for you and Nate to sit next to each other, but oh, you made it happen. No. no, heck no. Christy Fountain's lefty forehand, trying to get a little edge. It's in the middle of the fairway. Yeah. Yeah, we, we filmed those rounds in the morning. As we take a look at 18, this is a good idea of what Brian was talking about with that thick C shape. So you want to land in that first part. If you really yeah. want to get aggressive, you could kind of get closer to that pinch gap, but there's no reason to because the second shot is really just set up to try to get to the middle of uh, where the Joe Mess cast logo is. I mean, that's kind of what you're shooting for. <laughs> There's a, a poll that um, I'm guessing Christina, our, our moderator, <laughs> said, are you old enough to know about the Pop-Tart skit? <laughs> That's fantastic. What's funny about the pop tart skit is I think it's, it was exclusive to like a Facebook post. It wasn't oh, even really? like anything that was actually on the channel. Oh, so that's how you really got to you know your Joe Mess. You couldn't even find it if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. So basically the story goes for that one. Uh, you know, these rounds that we were recording were in the morning. In the morning. And we typically start recording about two to two and a half hours before whoever had the earlier tea time between yeah. Nate and I. And if you kind of got off to a late start and we headed into the RV to do commentary and you got to tee off in like 45 minutes after we're done with our commentary, yeah, you got to get some food in your system. So like there was one time and people always made jokes that it was happening all the time, but it actually happened one time where I actually took a bite of like a, a granola bar. But somebody <laughs> thought that it was a Pop-Tart because I think they heard the the plastic or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so the joke just became just germs. Just keep germs cramming these Pop-Tarts while we're doing commentary. <laughs> I can't hear him eat anymore. And it was just, so we really just leaned into it and had fun yeah. with it. That's off to the right side. Owen is going to have a very technical obstructed third mm -hmm. shot. Those, yeah. those, um, the walls, the temporary walls, do you know what those are actually for? Uh, no, do you? No, I don't, but they remind me oh. of a paintball course. I just wanted to say, you know, I didn't know. I thought you were about to give me some cool information. John. Well, it maybe it's a paint, maybe it's a paintball, paintball course. Man, when I was is... in junior high, we no. were very big into paintball. Oh, you're talking about the ones that right yeah, there? Yeah. Though they're building, tr they're planting trees there. Oh, okay. They're I protecting. think they're planting pecan trees, I think is what Mike said. Oh, okay. Either pecan, no sycamore. They're planting sycamore trees. That is the the actual answer. <laughs> Havasu DG says, "Okay, I think it? that's it's pushing that left side OB line. We'll see." Havasu DG says, "I'm old enough to have played tournaments with Germ before Joma's first footage at Charlotte Worlds. That was in 2012." Yeah, 2012. <laughs> Havasu, huh? Mm hmm. I wonder if that's Graham. Because I know maybe they'll confirm who they are. Show Gra yourself. Graham from uh, from Havasu, from Lake Havasu. And our moderator Old at player. Havasu DG is a true OG. So, yep. yes, sir, this is Graham. Yeah. Good guess. Just putting together some clues there. <laughs> you are a board game guy, and I'm sure you, you've played Clue in your time, so you... <laughs> probably beat that game I'm going to pat myself on the back. That was, I mean, I didn't get much information to go off of that one, but <laughs> that's good to hear old friends commenting in and watching the broadcast today. Yeah, so um, we saw that little promo for Tournament Central. Be sure if you want to go check out Tournament Central after we're done here, you can go check that out over on DGN. They are a good friend, Brian Earhart, who was your co-commentator. That's where you get to go see him and all the knowledge he brings and breaking down the round as it played out. Yeah, Brian is so good for this because he has such an in-depth knowledge of the FPO game. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in the morning before my rounds um, is to turn on DGN and watch the FPO field slug it out. Uh, it's a good mm -hmm. way for me to do research on the course conditions, but also just the route for my favorite players out there. That being said, even though I watch DGN, Brian knows the game and on a deeper level, I mean, he's really, he's out there on the course, he's interviewing the women, he knows what's going on in a, on a more mental uh, level. And well, yeah, like he said, you 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 threw him a name and you were like, hey, do you know? And he went it, yeah, and gave you like... Gave us a full profile. Like, yeah, because he's out there every day yep. for the MPO and FPO fields. And it's just amazing to see um, his dedication and being so well-rounded in the ongoings of the sport um, from one day to the next. And there's oh. some fans right there with cat merch. 
Those fans are certainly experiencing merch madness right now. <laughs> I was, yeah, I've tried. I love that scene, that shot right there. The U.S. Women's, you know, tournament it brings out, you know, on a school day, you know, but somehow the they best. they got him out here and and just the, the the future of our sport. It's the best. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it is five twenty one. Oh. Local time, so time the, has been flying. I'm sorry, you're yeah, right. The they're, kids they're are out probably not. In school hey, but anymore. how much cooler would it be if your parents were like, "Hey, this is an after school today. program for sure." But yeah, no <laughs> doubt. I mean, if the parents were like, "Hey, we're skipping school today. We got to see Cat Merch rip this shot on hole 18." Cool parents. Yeah, absolutely. Stay in school, kids. Uh, I mean, yeah. Go to almost all of your school. Almost all of it. But you know, if you got to skip a day, I was I was one of the guys that was uh, perfect attendance, and I got the ribbon every year. I, I never skipped for anything. I, my dad, you and I were the same. My dad was you. We pretty much weren't allowed to be sick because he probably knew that for the most part we were faking <laughs> anyway. So credit to him for for sticking with that because then it made it to where we we're like, all right, we're going to school. Yeah, that wasn't. There was no question. It wasn't until I got my truck. Yeah, they, <laughs> when you have control over. But if it's like you better not miss that bus. No, yeah, I, I you're did, on the bus. I didn't miss school. <laughs> I didn't do well, but I didn't miss it. Yeah, I did okay until things got really <laughs> difficult in high school. <laughs> Up until then, I was all about it. Hannah going for the aggressive left side. The grass is pretty catchy yeah. on this side, and it's sloped up. It's hard to find OB left, which is why this hole is coming in at the number one fairway driving percentage. Mm. And now it's at 97%. Only one person has found OB according to the stats. But that I don't understand how it says 31 out of 32 when over uh, 100 players have played. I'm, I'm still learning the PDGA live stats, folks. Bear with me here. Yeah, Jerm is a stats man. He's committed to it. He's going to learn the new the new I'm going to. Form. It's just... Just like we're learning how to do live disc golf. But you know what? I feel like we're off to a great start. Yeah. And when I say we, I mean you and Brian. Oh, Hart. no. I mean, you, there's so many people <laughs> behind the scenes here that are making this whole ship run, and we really appreciate all their expertise. Missy. Come on. Kick out. Turns over. I, I fear that it is out of bounds. Yeah, it's hard to see. We here. will find out soon. But if it is out of bounds, she'll need to make that putt. Otherwise, we will have, once again, a three-way tie at the top. Uh-oh. Our camera, Craig. Is it battery life or something? <laughs> I think we we got to change our battery real quick. We're still here. It's not the lights didn't go off. It is a lot darker in here though. <laughs> I've never sat oh, down in the no. I've never sat down in the commentary commentary chair this long. We need to get those purple cushions and put them. Oh, <laughs> absolutely! A little sponsor maybe for next round. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hurry and eat your pop tart. Fun time flipping says. Uh, yeah, now that the camera's off, we're back. Hey, we're back. We're back. Evelina, oh. oh, riding that right side wall and over and out of bounds. Meanwhile, back to the fairway where Lee Card is just waiting for. Mm -hmm second card to get out of the landing zone shout out to silver lat always carrying the joma's umbrella yeah silver. for kristen tatar silver lat met silver and kristen back in 2015 when i went over to estonia and did some clinics and i was actually honored with being the second pro player from america to ever do a clinic in estonia wow avery jenkins did one i believe in 2012 he was the oh, first avery one. jenkins was everywhere before you for yeah, all oh, of us he's he is the <laughs> The journeyman of all journeymen. Oh, I, I if you're ever, I think I've said this before, but if you're ever at, that is in bounds. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, if you're what ever out in an unfamiliar territory and just you reach need, out to Ave. Yeah, <laughs> he'll tell you where to eat, yeah. where to get a drink, where's the where's the local watering hole, where's the oldest course in yes. within a fifty mile radius. Yes. <laughs> Yes, totally. Avery is is pioneer in so many ways, and he actually is on a mission still currently to play the oldest course in every state of the United States. I love States. it. Yeah, I love it. I don't remember what the number is, but he's got a lot of them, and he's still working on it. Yeah, I I will I will never forget meeting Kristen 
and silver in back to back days. Uh, at the time, they they weren't together yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they maybe were aware of one another as far as being disc golfers, up and coming disc golfers. But yeah. at the time, like Kristen wasn't really big on the touring scene, or she mm-hmm. wasn't even playing tournaments. I don't think. And I will never forget when she uh, got to the one on one portion time with the throws, and she threw some shots in front of me and she was like asking for feedback and I had to like dig deep, man. I was like <laughs> looking for something to say cause I didn't want to just be like, she was looking for some solid advice. Yeah. And I came up with something, you know, there's a few things that were like not quite as polished as they are now. Mm. Um, and I don't take credit for them being polished. She is a <laughs> hard worker, Yeah. but I said some things, but I do remember leaving with some sort of note that was along the lines of, I mean, what I see in your game and the little time that I've seen, you possess the, the quality to be a great disc golfer and the sky's the limit. And I, I kind of forgot that I said that until she won uh, Jonesboro and the right the event after she had lost the Champions Cup and it was that big controversy about her kid yeah. being this, the, mm-hmm. her caddy. Uh, she came back and won the next week and I went over and I congratulated her and completely forgetting the conversation that we had in 2015 remembering that we had met, but that yeah. was it. And she told me that something that I had said to her that day had left an impact with her and had kept her going. And man, I almost just like broke down in tears thinking about like the player that she had become and thinking that it had some sort of, I don't know, minor impact on what she had done. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, you never know, right? You Years never know. down the line. You just never know. And that's why it's important it, to take the time to like help people when they're, you know, they're asking for that kind of advice. Or of mm-hmm. course you were there for that purpose, but still. Like, well, sure. But I mean, it's, it's again, not to make it seem like I am to be credited for any of her success at all, but we just had a really, um, an amazing moment where she shared something with me that I wasn't, I had not remembered. And yeah, it, anyway, she's just such a, she is the face of disc golf. I mean, MPO, FPO, all of it. She is the current. And she, she's like a certified rock star in Estonia. Oh, she's received international. awards every single year. I'm saying when she's back home, like yeah. she's always posting about, you of know, course. And she's sponsored by like car companies and man. Nike and like, and Nike. you know, like <laughs> dreams for, for yes. people in the States. She is the face of disc golf. And, uh, she is sweet and kind to her competitors. She is a champion. She is driven, uh, she's focused, poised, and she roots for the players who are on her card. I mean, it's literally everything you could ask for. And on top of that, a mother and a female role model for for athletes, not for women athletes, for athletes. Yeah. So hats off to her for just being the, just, yeah. Best word to describe it, simply put, she is wonderful. I wish I knew the, the word. Estonian word. Oh yeah, sure. That wouldn't be hard to find. I mean, <laughs> pronouncing it would be the hard part. <laughs> I don't know. You're pretty good at it. Oh, I, I don't. Wouldn't say that. I try. I tried saying Volgerva for like four months straight, and everyone in Estonia <laughs> made fun of me for the way I said it. There's a that putt uh, for par for Owen off the cage low. It will be a bogey finish and three over for Owen today in the opening round. That'll put her at least nine strokes back of the lead, depending on what happens here with Missy on the final hole. Yeah, and for what we know she can do on this course, we know that this is just the beginning. It's, it's a just tough a starting round for her. Start. We're gonna see, we're gonna see her kick it into gear. I know that. Yeah, for sure. And it, you know, it, just because a course has a lot of sh- shot shapes that go left to right, today I saw her go backhand on a lot of these holes that I just assumed that she'd be going forehand. Mm-hmm. Uh, she does like throwing the Anheuser release. Uh, choppy style forehand as opposed to the flip up smooth play that you might see more from Haley King. Yeah. Uh, and that might mean that some of these landing zones aren't wow. quite, they don't quite suit her style for forehand. So. That's what I meant to do. <laughs> that is she said, I'm going to let them believe that's what I meant to that do. Is, I love it. She just outed herself. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, she's going to finish the round strong. I love it. It, it appears, appears to be that way, and we, we hope to see it. Evelina does complete hole 18 in four shots, but an added penalty stroke for the par in the end. She turns in a three under par round, which is a very solid round. Mm -hmm. And Chrissy Fountain, man, minus that stretch in the back nine, she was right there in the mix. Had a little bit of trouble starting in the 12 to 13 range, but nothing to hang her head about.
Tongue will look to battle back. And that, oh, and Missy was in bounds. And I guess missed the putt from the fairway. And with the par, she will be your leader going into round two with a seven underscore. A very solid round. Yeah. I believe she only had one bogey back there on hole 14. And that was just a, a missed putt from inside a range that she normally yeah. makes. Yeah, definitely. So very close to going bogey free. But in the end, seven under is the lead mark. And this gets away from Haley. And honestly, fortunate that she hit that tree because that was going straight out of bounds. She needs to find some fight. This has got to be a tough lie to get up those stairs. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, it's like... Uh, it's unfortunate because you'd love to see what Henna is able to produce with an actual swing, but in the end, she has to lay up and play for par. Yeah, now we get to see how Kristen attacks this. I always love Kristen's bag. It's all yeah, the gradient blue. Yeah, or like it's like all blue themed mm -hmm. for you know for her home. The colors. Also, easy to find if you left this behind on the course. Not in the winter. What I'm saying is, you would know that there's a gap between. Oh, oh because of the gradient. Mint, you know, there's got to be something's missing. Yeah, it's like looking at the paint wall. You're not going like to find it because it's you know, covered every in color snow, between. But... <laughs> Look Come at on. this turnover trying to go. I mean, a great oh, wow. effort. It's going to be a long bid. But for where it hit, it to yes. get all of that play. She crests that hill. I think she might find herself near C1 edge. But in the end, a good effort uh, delivered there from Kristen. Mm hmm. And a good overhead look here on the last part of hole 18 as the players have to get over these steps. And it creates a false front in a way where it's a, at least a blind landing zone. So you, I think yeah. you saw one of our players jump as Haley trying <laughs> to figure to out, yeah. where am I going? All six foot seven of me was doing the same thing on this hole when I was there the other day trying to figure out how these women were going to try to attack this course. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Some good volleyball ups. Would love to save the par here. This is a little hot. Needs to slow down. Be on your toes. Yeah, okay. The zoom in had me fooled on the distance yeah. and the power. <laughs> the putts haven't been dropping for Haley the way she'd like, but a very manageable distance here for the last hole, last putt. Oh, oh just nestled. Okay. Hannah. Slightly elevated basket. We've mm -hmm. talked about that being a problem for Henna. She's about 18 to 23 feet deep. She'll have that putt for the par after laying up her third shot. Ooh, here we go. Meanwhile, Kat has an opportunity for the birdie. This being her third throw. A little bit short. Mm -hmm. And that finds out of bounds. That oh, is... That is a surprising result. I, it looked like it found the fairway side. Yeah, and it just. Mm. And it's really surprising considering what we saw from Owen on her approach. It looked like that was going to be clearly out of bounds and ended up getting the yeah. green flag and that one which seemed to be green i think you can barely see it in the corner of your screen that ob just kind of cuts in just at that last bit towards the green kristen's birdie effort comes up just short a valiant effort in the end she will tie evelina 
and Sayananda for three under in fourth place. Oh, and also Natalie Ryan, four players. Yeah, that three under is a very popular score after first, that's at the first round. And Henna could have found herself in a five-way tie if she had been in position and executed the shots necessary to get a birdie here on 18. I'm not even going to try that, but after this putt, we'll... Where's that? Oh, Emeline. Geez. Okay. I don't know. If Thank that's you correct. for the super chat. Trying Emeline. To... Yeah, Ooh. that might be wonderful in Estonian. And it will be a final bogey for Kat. The par bid coming up short. Now, this is what Henna is left with for her par and to stay at two under. If not, she will find herself in a five-way tie at one under par. So that's pretty good, Germ. So I guess you did all right. Pretty good is about what I expect. Pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Oh, kind of hung on her finger or something. It just didn't feel like a... That is, it's, it's the grip issue that I think mm -hmm. plagues her the most. And it's why she gets a lot of yanks and, and grip locks on her putts is that she just hasn't quite found a way to get a comfortable grip on the putter. Mm. Um, when she sorts that out, she's going to be a whole mess of a problem for the field. Guy. Solid putt to end the round. Yeah, a great, a great up and down from back there. Uh, obviously, Haley's not necessarily pleased with the round mm -hmm. performance and the final score. We but got four rounds. We got three more rounds to go on the it, same course. It feels good to finish with a good putt, no matter how you play for the day, especially in front of the crowd on coverage. Take a final look at the scores. You called it right there. Missy Gannon at seven under, Rebecca Cox, Valermond, Hano at three, and I believe Sayananda will get the lead card bump for round two due to her PDJ number. Our chase card will have Evelina Kristen, Natalie Ryan, and Sarah Hokum. A few world champions on that card. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's shaping up to to be a, a solid, solid weekend of this golf. For sure. One. And I, I'm excited to see what happens as uh, you said, some wind is pro projected to come into play. And mm -hmm. that, I mean, that is what the, the people who run Awesome Beer Works and that have designed the course have said that is a, a big time factor on this course is traditionally having to deal with the wind. We didn't see much of that today, uh, but you know, if things get drier, but the wind picks up, I think the scores are going to be similar to what they were today, but maybe even a little bit worse. Um, mm -hmm. The the woods are pretty dense, though. And when the woods are dense, you don't have to worry about sure. the woods holes dealing with the wind as much. But these open holes coming in at the end, which proved to be quite difficult for the ladies today, uh, might prove for a very challenging finish as we head into round two and the weekend. That's going to do it yeah. though, for us. Yeah, so the one last reminder, this was our, our pilot episode of Jomez Cast. Huge shout out to Germ and Brian Earhart for carrying it through through the majority. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. We had about 2,000 people the entire time. That's incredible. That was awesome. Thank you so much for tuning yes, in. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks for all the, the, the questions that came in, the super chats, the shout outs. We had such a great time. And uh, be sure to come back for the final round of Jomez. Uh, we will be doing another ver uh, round of Jomez Cast for the final round of the U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championship on DGN Pro exclusively. So be sure to go in and uh, get that taken care of so you can come and join us once again. Thank you so much to everyone that has joined us. Uh, we will have uh, our standard post-production coverage with Two Hot Geese. So that'll be out tomorrow morning. They'll be in this studio here shortly sitting in these very seats and they'll probably still be warm from, from us sitting here for <laughs> as long as we have. But uh, so yeah, you can still look for that from us and be sure if you want to tune in to the live coverage of rounds two and three to go to DGN. And get your questions lined up for Sunday and come back 
on DGN Pro with your questions lined up and ready to watch a major champion crowned here in Austin, Texas, this Sunday, March 24th. Once again, thank you, Jonathan, for uh, everything that you've done with not just getting all this together with the crew and organizing the Joe Pro business, but just for, you know, just being a solid dude. Appreciate you, Thanks, man. man. Thanks for being here, Ride or Die commentary since course, 2017. Man. I know, man. Somebody needs to tally up how many rounds you have done of commentary because it's, how many, like if you had to ballpark it, like if we think about how many rounds every 700? year. 700 is your ballpark. It's my ballpark. I can't wait maybe, to, maybe I, I hope we find out before it's 1,000. So whenever it's a thousand, and you, we won't tell you when it is, and there's gonna be like confetti cannons as you wrap up the final like words of that round on camera, like that would actually be pretty fun. Yeah, well, but, um, I, yeah. So I mean, it, like we said, uh, it, thank you so much for joining. Um, if you're still watching, feel free to send us some notes. Um, I'd love to hear what yeah. your thoughts were on this. Uh, if you guys want more props, I mean, we can bring in, you know, <laughs> confetti guns and squirt guns. Sound effects. No, there are course. sound effects on this board somewhere. And Will I don't they hear touch those? Them. I don't know. Maybe. I don't even want to touch it. I want to find out. You guys tell me. That's an appropriate one to click right there. Yeah, the, applause. The applause. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to come back and ch check out Final Round on DGN Pro of Jomez Cast. We really appreciate it. Let's take one final look at the scores as we send you all out.